And we are live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. I'm Brea Thorne. And uh, yes, we're live eventually. But uh, it was definitely, for sure, probably going to happen. Uh, glad to have you guys here. Sorry to make you wait. We got a really special one tonight. This is really exciting because this is actually something that I... Uh, you, you, if you guys remember the video that I did with SkyTech um, back near the beginning... Well, like, what was it in... March? Is it March, maybe? Anyway, you know the special one we did with the giveaway and everything? While I was there, I talked to them about, hey, what are you guys doing for a 4th of July sale? And they were like, what do you got in mind? Which I was not expecting as an answer. So I said, hey, give stuff away, please. Give something, now not a giveaway, as in you enter to win. I'm saying, with a PC, Give them something to go along with it. So, here we are. Michael Superbacker, what's up? Dave's a mention. Glad to see you. Mike B, glad to see you too. How you doing? Blue RCC, how's it going? Yes, the Discord said 8.30 Central. However, live streams are always up in the air, especially with me. Like, I just finished a huge video that was not filmed here, meaning I had to take my stuff out of here and move stuff back into here. There was some recalibration I had to do, but uh, now we're good to go. Does everything look all right? Everything sound all right? Y'all let me know. Uh, Soccer TL, what's up? How's it going? Stature, that is incorrect, but uh, uh, did I miss April 1st? April 1st. April Fool's, okay. You know, the funny thing is, Mr. Heavy Hitters, I see you back there too. Kevin Coons, how's it going? Uh, the, uh, and uh, Tracy McCubin. It's actually not starting till 1.30 a.m. That is, nope, that's not the case. Here we are. Uh, it was 20 minutes, 20 minutes late. Guys, it's not the end of the world. It's, a, you know, it's, that's what it is. That's why it's like going live. Uh, every time I check out a, like a VOD or something from like Point Crow or like Ludwig or something, they always jump in with late wig and late crow as if it's pretty common for people to be late to stream. So... That's just how that goes. This is not something I do regularly a few times a week anymore, and not, not for, you know, which will come eventually. Uh, again, it's when I've got something for you that I'll be doing it. So it's not really like something that I have just to flip the switch on and, and go, which that's the eventual goal with the studio here. Flip a switch, be live, do the thing. So as I was saying, um, so my, my idea was to do some kind of bundle. Okay, now there's one funny thing that uh, <laughs> one funny thing that came out of this is they now, if you go to skytechgaming.com and you go to their pre-built PCs full list, you'll see a PC there that stands out from all the other ones. All the other ones. It stands out for a very specific reason, and that is the color of the case. Okay. So it, this is from when we had the, the thermal take thing happen and I, and I was like, ooh, let's do this turquoise P6. And they were like, yeah, that looks good. So when we were looking for a case to do for something like this, I was like, hey, Montec in the Sky 2, which is a case that I've been wanting to get my hands on anyway, they have a special color. So we're gonna get to see that in just a little bit. I'm about to order the $1,600 Kronos. Uh, Mark Padaleski, you might want to hold off a bit. Now, this is, and I need to double check my numbers here. Emily Baxter, the cartoony witch game kitten. The delay lasted longer than the coup in Russia. Or coop, the coop in Russia, as you said there. Uh, is that, is 20 minutes? Was it 20 minutes long? JTG says, sounds good. Awesome, thank you. Uh, the, uh, the sickness says, I've gotten two PCs from SkyTech. Love them. Awesome. Well, I just ordered today, should I cancel? You decide for yourself. If your budget is around uh, 1,700 bucks. Kevin Kuhn said, yes, I am here. I am here. Uh, you in particular should like the, the drip today. Representing my buddy, Roby. So I'm, I'm just double checking my dates here for when this is going to go, because this, this sale is not launching on this live stream, but it is gonna be closer to when we're gonna actually gonna upload the edited video for this a lot sooner. Actually, I need to start recording here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it here too. 
Okay. A lot sooner than some of the other ones. Like the, some of the other ones, we're still crank. We're, we're still cranking away on. We're still working on them. Um, but yeah, here we go. Okay, so this sale, this deal, I convinced them to not put an end date on it because there was already one limitation on it, and that is the quantity, okay? I should actually do my whole, the intro thing again where I was talking because I wasn't recording locally just yet. I don't have it set on this PC to auto record once I go live. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, this is the Falcon Northwest PC that I've been using for streaming, all my streams out here, and it's been super reliable even in, this, in the conditions out here, but there's certain settings that I didn't have set on it. So, some of you may remember the video that I did with SkyTech a few months ago, and if you wanna check that out, you can check it out right here. Uh, that one was a really special one where we did a custom build for a giveaway, and we uh, teamed up with Intel and Thermaltake for that one. Thermaltake provided a really cool looking turquoise P6 case. Intel provided 13900KS, all this good stuff. And of course, Thermaltake also provided a lot of uh, liquid cooling components, all that stuff. So uh, during that time, though, I was talking to SkyTech about like, hey, you know, what are you guys doing for 4th of July? Because 4th of July last year was a really big one. And uh, they were like, well, I don't know, what do you have in mind? Which is not the answer I was expecting. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You just basically paid for the shirt that I, <laughs> I got. <laughs> thank you so much for the $19.99 super chat. Kevin Kunstler, BMOC. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Um, I haven't, because I'm not regularly streaming in, uh, right now, uh, I, I'm out of practice at uh, dealing with generosity. So, uh, And I was never very good at it to begin with. But thank you. So what we came up with was uh, to do a little bit of a bundle. So here's how this is going to work. They have a system that's on their site right now. And if you go look at it, it stands out just a little bit because my major contribution to this was to say, hey, let's do something with a unique color. And Montec, I was looking around at cases in Montec, I've liked the Sky 2 for a while. I wanted to get my hands on a Sky 2 for a while. And they have one in a very special color. And I was like, check this out. They were like, oh. And now that's a standard pre-built that you can get. The Azure 2. Uh, but this one, we worked together a little bit on the specs and everything. And you guys know how I am. I, um, I don't necessarily min-max, but I do like to, uh, when I'm specking something out and configure, configuring something, I like to sort of not just go for certain things and ignore others. It's a really well-balanced system, and it's really exciting because also Intel teamed up with us on this one too. So this one is gonna feature an Intel GPU, the ARC A770, which since they came out with their uh, more recent updates to the software for it, the firmware, I should say, uh, I should say uh, the vBIOS, all that stuff, and software and all that stuff. Basically, the hardware was already good and they got to work on the other side of things to get them working, to get the card working better with games, all their cards. And since then, it's a real contender at a really great price. So that's why you see the Azure 2 coming in at 1699 with a 13600K, a Z690, 32 gigs of DDR5. Eh? Eh? Got you DDR5. And an Intel Arc A770. So it's actually a really, really compelling deal. 16 gigs of VRAM in that thing. 16 gigs of VRAM. You know all this talk about how Games are demanding more and more VRAM. We need more VRAM. Well, 16 gigs should have you covered. Love your stuff. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Saw that one whole Intel campaign all over the channel. Uh, hello, Brain Swarm. Hello, Mr. Heavy Hitters. Force Green, I like that. So retro. Yeah, uh, they, they have some really cool colors in that. And that's something I'm really enjoying seeing in the case industry is that they're going for, for newer materials, like wood in some cases. Fractal is doing a great job on that. But Montec, to be honest, is really coming through with some really unique stuff. 
And before, you know, CES dropped and all these different uh, f fan manufacturers came out with their reverse fans, Montec had the Sky 2 with the reverse fans in it. So we're going to get to take a good look at that and check it out. And it's funny because the Azure 2, the, the original Azure, which you can still purchase, was a heck of a system. And it blew my mind because it was a negative pressure airflow setup. And that's not what I usually go for, but man, I could not get the thing to overheat. And the performance was still great. So this is actually going to kind of follow in those footsteps, and I can't wait to check it out. So let's go ahead and unbox the PC, and then we'll get to the bonus. There is one caveat, though, to this. This is not necessarily a sale per se. This is a drop. They're going to be dropping 50 of these where you get to get the system and the bonus. I'll show you when we get to it. So you're going to want to be ready to pull the trigger on 4th of July when that comes up. So give me a sec. We'll get the PC over here and get it unboxed. Now this, <clears throat> let me go ahead and switch over to my other mic so that I can move around without losing audio. Okay, how we sounded? This guy good? Okay. My PC has a Montec case, very nice. And I think Intel wanted to sell 22 million of them bundles in AppHider. CPU and GPU OEM kits. You, haven't, you don't know what the bundle is. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to rub that. <laughs> You're saying that without knowing what the bundle is. Okay. Now, yours... I forgot I have a sit-stand desk, and I can make this a lot easier on myself. Yours won't necessarily come packaged the same way. They sort of had to ship this one out really quickly, but the interior box should be just about the same. Okay. Just toppled everywhere. Love that. Love it. Some of the things in this in this bundle di didn't get well. Part of the bundle didn't get finalized until very recently, so they did have to ship this out pretty quickly. So it's packed a little differently. Okay. Just need to put a preview window over here so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. 
So yeah, we have an, uh, th there's like an exterior box on this and an interior box. And this one, th yours might, may just be the interior box or they may be doing the double boxing. What I'll do is for the final video, I'll go ahead and just put that right here. Or I can honestly say both and then edit out the one that's not correct, but I'd rather not make it to where someone can clip me saying something that's not true. Lots of safety precautions here. I'd like to see that. I honestly like the anonymous sort of outer box thing. It's a little bit better security when you're uh, shipping. And there you go, Montex Sky 2. Still need that. Okay. Now you guys have seen me unbox a lot of things. What do I always say? Always. You keep this box, you keep the foam that goes in it, you even keep the plastic that goes around your PC and any foam that's inside holding your GPU in place and all that, all right? If you ever need to move or store it or send it back for RMA, you want the original packaging to protect it. Well, Atramentis, the deal is not live until 4th of July. So can't really link you to it just yet. So this right here is basically your preview. Hey, this is what's happening. This is what's going to happen. 4th of July. So let's see. And here we have a couple of boxes. Looks like we have mouse and keyboard. I don't know if you guys remember last stream where I was, I'd forgotten to grab my, my, uh, a backup mouse. My, all my other ones are like packed away still. So I was like switching my mouse back and forth between the streaming PC and the uh, test PC. It was driving me crazy. Okay, here's the default SkyTech mouse. We've seen these before, and I actually kind of like the ergonomics on it. It has a little ring finger rest right here as a thumb rest on it for a freebie mouse this has always been one of my favorites from a system integrator i'm totally ruining my uh hey can you focus on me no i'm super sweaty because <laughs> the box is blocking the ac my ac unit because that's like right over there right in front of me sorry guys And then we have our keyboard. This looks a little bit different. Let's take a look at it. There we go. Is this a different, did they get a new one? No, it's the same one. Yeah, it's the same one they've had before. Uh, I felt worse from like Dell and HP. You know what I mean? These, these are fine for getting you started, that kind of thing. So technically, this does come with a keyboard and mouse and other thing. Extra fan. It says an extra fan. 
so this, I think, is the fan that can go on the PSU shroud. Yeah, that's a reverse fan right there. So you have an extra fan that can go on the PSU shroud, which is ventilated, as I'll show you, to bring in a little bit more air right towards the GPU. And here we have some stuff, power cables, looks like uh, PSU cables, things like that. Yeah, I think I might like this more if it wasn't packed in a single-use plastic bag, but that's all good. It's fine. We have a flash drive, probably the uh, the BIOS for the motherboard. Oh no, well, yeah, 32 gig, or it could be an image. I'd have, I'll have to see if there's any documentation on that. Okay, we have our Wi-Fi antenna right here. Oh, oh. That is a built-in mounting mechanism for LGA 1700. They put a contact plate on there. They use a CPU contact frame and they give you the original mechanism for locking it down. Huh, nice, good job Skytech. I know that that's an option. I know that's an option in the configurator when you're doing a custom system, but to do it in a pre-spec pre-built, like a pre-configured pre-built. That's cool. In the original box, that's where that goes. All right. Now, I don't really like this kind of foam, and but I, when, when you're looking at Montech, Montech brings a lot of value to the table for a lower cost. That's one of their main things. Like they're, they're trying new things. They're, they're doing new stuff, but they're also, you know, budget friendly. So I'm not surprised to see that here, but you'll still see this in a, uh, like an Lee and Lee case that costs 13, you know, 30% more. Uh, they're still using these for like the Lancool 3. You'll still find like single impact styrofoam. With Montec, I'm not, I'm not surprised to see it, and eventually they might change to not having it. Oh, are you kidding me? God, that looks good. Are you serious? Dude. <laughs> oh boy. You know, I'm not, I don't always have the best ideas, but sometimes I have the best ideas. Now, you will have seen this if you watch the video from Jay's Two Cents. This is the exact case that Montek sent him. This is the Sky 2 in Morocco blue. Stop, it says. Oh, we ain't stopping. Look at that, though. It's freaking gorgeous, all right? Like, I don't know, the camera probably doesn't do it that much justice, but in person, this is flipping gorgeous. Okay, let's actually move this. Yeah, it is a really great color. I need to like change my aperture on my camera because it's like, it is too much depth of field. Give me a second to go over and do that.
And now that's not bright enough. One second. <laughs> One second. Uh, filters, color correction. There we go. That look okay. That way it's not as blurry. Like, it doesn't get as shallow a depth of field that way. Which is good in this case, because it keeps focusing on the foreground. Got knocked off the broadcast. There are vegetable starch and seaweed made bags now. Cool. MSOS was involved in many errors on that one. Yeah, the color is, is really gorgeous. Okay, we gotta open this thing up. We gotta get the stuff out so you can see what's inside. Is that, yeah, these are a little bit more than finger tight, so. Yeah, and there, is a, there are instructions in the quick start guide. It tells you to stop and follow those. And besides which, a glance, at a glance you can tell, this is not ready to rock. Like, you gotta get this out of here first. When you're doing this, please put your glass in the box. Don't just lean it on your couch or your desk, on the side of your desk or something, don't do that. And another thing is, that I recommend is to take, there we go, take a picture of the way that this is set up if there are multiple pieces. So we got this one big piece. That makes it easy right there. Be careful removing it. Make sure that you don't tug out any cables because this is not preformed. This forms to it in a very short amount of time, this Instapack, and it can form around cables. So you want to really kind of ease it out. There we go. You'll get a better view of this with the top-down camera, but yeah, I like it. I don't know why Montec put the uh, GPU power, power, power cable pass-through all the way over here, but check this out. Okay, hold on. I promise, I'm not dying. I'm not. Get a little, little hydrate going here. Or chaos, what's up? Be careful of any clips on the air cooler when removing the Instapack. Yep. Okay, what was I going to say? So, hearkening back to my first review of a SkyTech system, it was of the Prism 2. And that had a 3080 in it. And they ran essentially a single eight pin power cable and used the primary one and then the pigtail. And I was like, no guys, no, you, you should not do that. I, I, as a builder, I don't agree with that. Plus the 3080 pulls more than the, you know, 150, 175 watts, something around along those lines that you're, you can even run on that single power cable. My numbers are probably way off. Don't blame me. It's been a long time since uh, I looked at all that stuff. And look at this, dual power cables here. Each one has their pigtail, just cable managed down. Love that. So, yeah, what we're seeing here, this is the Azure 2, the blue edition, in the Morocco blue Sky 2. That was a lot of, yeah. And it's got one of these in it. 13600K, 13600K, 14 cores in this thing. Six performance cores, eight efficiency cores. It can do a lot and all at once. So it is now, I will say it is a bit overkill to put a 360 millimeter all in one liquid cooler on this thing, but get, it has a deep cool 360 millimeter all in one liquid cooler, cooling it down 32 gigs of DDR5. And let's see.
Can't really see the specs on the side there, so we'll see. Because that's not listed on the thing. Kingston NV2, which is a Gen 4 NVMe drive, which is nice. Um, it, it's on the slower side of Gen 4 NVMe drives, but that makes it more affordable, meaning you can get a Gen 4 drive in your system that's a little bit more budget-oriented. Okay, so hot, Braythorn sweating. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that, the, is that the Montec case? I do like what they're doing lately and really like the case color. Mr. Geethy and I agree 100%. Raider Ray Braythorn, you know I am an air guy. Yeah. Plenty of room for overclocking. That is true, Kevin Coons. And with that case skew and a Z690, which I think it's a smart move to go with a Z690 uh, because you have all of the, pretty much all the features you get with Z790. I mean, it's a little bit different in some of the nuances, but they really did not reinvent the wheel going with Z790. Uh, and the cost is higher for Z790. Oh, Skytech, not these kind of stickers. Look at this. Look at this. No. This is good. It's good that they had this, okay? And I, I should have actually, I should have mentioned it. This was over all of the, uh, uh, the important connections. <laughs> here we go. It was like this, important monitor connection down here in your GPU. And you pull that off, there's everything else. Because yeah, you can connect to here and it will display video, but it's not gonna be that great on performance if you do that. So let me see here. What kind of motherboard are we rocking? Looks like it's tucked away under here. I'm all struggling to see, and I've got a light, like, right here. Nice battery. This guy's good. Okay, we've got an ASRock motherboard in here. Hyper M.2, USB 3.2 Gen 2, PCIe Gen 5, of course. Um, and we have Wi-Fi included here. What kind of Wi-Fi is it? That would be uh, it doesn't say on the because it has like the M.2 type of Wi-Fi card in there. I was trying to see on the label what kind it is. Either way, Z690, it's not the beefiest Z690 out there. You look at the VRM heat sinks, you can tell that. But for a 13600K, the power delivery is more than adequate. And also the I.O., not bad at all, actually. I'm quite pleased. Uh, on the I.O. back here, we have... I should be doing this on the top-down camera, honestly. <laughs> uh, well, we'll look at that in just a second. We have two USB... Let me see. Two, four. Four USB 3.0. Sorry, y'all didn't need to see that. You need to see this. Four USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, one USB 3.2. That's going to be a 10 gig right there, and a USB Type-C right here. It's also probably just 3.2, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, not too bad. Total of seven USB Type-A ports and one USB Type-C port, not too shabby. And of course, our two-slot card here, which is the Intel Arc A770, which I, look, nobody ever sent me one. I never got to test it. It was really disappointing because I was really excited about it. I never got it. So this is, this is my first opportunity to do it, and this system should be a great platform for that. Now, where does the air intake, says Mike. Guess what? These fans that look like exhausts, they're reversed fans. So you have a full filtered side intake right here, but because they're reversed fans, you don't have to look at that part of the fan, which for those who don't care, it doesn't matter. It's going to perform the same way. But for those who do care and want to, all the fans to show their nice, pretty side, these are really cool. In fact, if you wanted to, you could actually swap out this exhaust fan right here with this one here and get intake through the back. And then have three intake, three exhaust, meaning a neutral pressure airflow setup. You can also just add this as an intake on the bottom, because guess what? This fully ventilated right here. Now, there is stuff in there because you've got your, you know, your power supply, your cables are in there. If you put any 3.5 inch hard drives, all of that, that's gonna take up space, but there still is, intake is different from exhaust. If your intake is, if basically intake 
can be a little bit indirect and it's gonna pull air from somewhere. Exhaust being impeded is usually the thing that is a little rougher. Like you don't want to put, I mean, but having gl like glass right in front of your intake, not good. Anyway, so yes, so 360 millimeter AIO with exhaust right here. We can swap this, we could swap this out for an intake fan or we could add an intake fan down here, perhaps for the final video. I'll try to do some testing with both of those setups or it might run out of time because this video needs to come out by like Friday. So I might run out of time for that. So we take a look at the top here. Let's actually swap over to our top down camera for that. Oh, hey, look, there's our, you know what I realized last time I was like, oh no, the camera's too close. And I forgot that I could just like lower the desk. Anyway, so uh, what you've got here are two USB 3.0s, one Type-C connector here, and separate microphone headphone jacks right there, which I prefer personally. You have an LED control in case it's not being run uh, from the motherboard, and of course your power button right there. Now, interestingly enough, we don't have like the Intel version of the A770. We have the Acer Predator. That makes this even more exciting for me because I've been wanting to check out an Acer GPU since they stepped into the market. Haven't had the opportunity. And lower the brightness on this. So the Intel, Pre uh, <laughs> Intel. so the Acer Predator Intel Arc A770. This one is a unique card. We're gonna get a good look at that. I guess I should raise the brightness, actually. And this should focus. Can we just focus now? There we go. So you, now you can get a better look at the inside of it. Now, there's no uh, heat spreader for the, uh, for the NVMe drive there and the M.2 drive. No heat spreader for that. Uh, that's, you can take that or leave that. Or you can even add one. They sell them uh, aftermarket as well. And as you can see, Mike, there you go. Those are intake blades. Those are oriented for intake right there. So yeah, you're gonna have full side intake there. And also you can see how this is mesh right here and you can mount two fans right here. This fan back here probably wouldn't get much going because that's where the power supply is sitting. But over here, you're actually gonna get some fresh air, which actually works pretty well for this GPU uh, because it's a little hard to show you but this is the one that has both the blower fan and the, uh, the standard cooling fan, which is right here, and the blower fan is right here. So getting fresh air to this area, not a bad idea. Completely lost track of this. How is this build going so far? Good, good. It's just, uh, this is in the Montec Morocco blue color. This is the, uh, the, the Azure 2. Hey, Toaster, thank you for joining up, becoming a member. Appreciate that. Of course, see your radiator mounted up here as well. There you go. I'm sorry, guys, this is not my normal camera for the top down. It's just my main camera, which this is not my main, normal main camera here. My main camera is out of commission until it's repaired by Sony. And yeah, you can see your 32 gigs of DDR5, your cooler, uh, your, your 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, cooling that 13600K, and our Intel Arc A770 Acer Predator card right here. This is an interesting system. I cannot wait to boot this thing up. Now there is, let me see, one other M.2 socket here. Is that? Oh, no, there's also another one right behind the GPU. So you can add an uh, additional two M.2 drives to this board here. Uh, but this is coming with one terabyte of PCIe Gen 4 NVMe storage. So there you go. Here, let's do a little peely right there. There's one. And two. Oh, that's pretty. Like a, it is mirror finish right there. Very cool. Okay, so I do like the Montec badge right there. That's nice. It's a metal badge. Uh, so looks pretty nice. The power supply is a 750 watt unit. Let's see if we can open up this side panel here and take a look at our cable management. Uh, 
Let's give you all even. There you go. Okay, let's see how they did. Okay, that is serviceable cable management right there. Looks like we have some, probably some case things. Sorry. Looks like we have probably some case parts in here. They stored it basically where the hard, where hard drives would go. Let's see what we get with this. Actually, it looks like it's this side. Yep, there you go. Fan screws, fan screws, PCIe screws, some zip ties, some Velcro straps, basically all the stuff that would come with this case by default. Yeah, so we have our, it's, it's loose, like they didn't use this one zip tie point right here, which they could have done. Uh, but it's still ma cable managed enough with this down here and of course on the other side there so that it's not just flopping around um, and all your stuff is here. Now, the one thing I don't like about this style of cable management is that if you need to fix one thing, you have to undo all of it. It's not like separated in any way. You have all your RGB right here, all your power stuff's right here, all the same. Front panel connectors, it's all together. However, the way that Montec designed the cable management in this section here, I don't know that there's any other way to do it. So it's likely an issue with that where there's not a whole lot of options because whenever you have side intake like this, you're giving up a lot of real estate for cable management. That's just how that goes. That's just part of the deal. Like we've even got our little, our little manual for the case. Very nice. And down here is where you'll see our power supply. It looks like it's a Gigabyte UD power supply, gold 750. I, don't worry, I doubt this is the same one that was uh, exploding. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> They're a little more circumspect than that. They, they are care uh, pretty careful about that kind of thing. No, no company that I know of willingly sells out things that they know are gonna, it sends out things that are gonna, they know are gonna cause RMAs and house fires. So, but yeah, you got your, uh, your storage rack right here where you can put two 3.5 inch hard drives or two, uh, or you can also put a, at least one two and a half inch SSD, and there's two mounting points for that right here as well. Quite a bit of storage you can put in this fairly small case. Now, what I might do if, I, if you're just doing, using this for gaming, period, you take this out and make, it, basically it frees up the intake there a little bit more. You can move some of your cable management over here so that there's a freer path from the other side where it is ventilated to get airflow up to your GPU. If you put the reverse fan, right here, if you put that on the, G on the PSU shroud. That's something that I might do if I wasn't gonna use, if it was me and I wasn't gonna use that. You know, that's, uh, I like storage, I like storing things, so I probably wouldn't do it. But there you have it, looks pretty good. What are you guys saying? Banshee boys, how's it going? Son graduated middle school. Oh, congratulations to them, that's awesome. GT school for academics, very cool. Lazarus, spot a i5 12600K with 30 CCI, 32 gigs RAM from Skytech today for 1400. Get it tomorrow, and I'm excited. That's a great deal right there. 3060 Ti is a beast. Poka Daily, how's it going? Welcome. It's my first computer. I think it's going to be great. I think it is too. Sky 2 is honestly a really nice case, pretty easy to build into. Glad to hear it. Is that ARC A770, the LE, or the normal one? The, the limited edition is just Intel's version of the A770. This one is the one from Acer, the Acer Predator one. I do like the look of the uh, LE, though. I really do. What's the CPU and GPU of this? 13600K and Intel Arc A770, Acer Predator. Gigabyte made quite some improvements to their PSUs. That's what I hear. Gingerbread Timbers, what's up? How's it going? 
Good. Look at this Morocco blue. It's coming. I think the color is probably coming through a little different. This is almost more of a dark turquoise, dark tealish color. I think the color on this camera is not the best, or it's not set properly. But uh, yes, it is. I, I love it. I love the color. And we're just looking at the cable management. And you have your right up top here, your ventilated top panel with a captive screw. I do like that for a budget case, seeing the captive screws is nice. So there are some other mounting options here for like larger fans, but I think a 360 with three 120 millimeter fans is, is already pretty much overkill for a 13600K. But hey, as was stated earlier, nothing wrong with that. Room for overclocking if that's something you intend to do. Kind of surprised they didn't install the spare reverse fan, but looks like you have some spare room on the hub still. Well, yes, and that's a good thing because we were talking about this earlier. You could actually, if because here's what you have for your airflow layout, right? You've got two intake, one, two, three, four exhaust. If you wanted to have a neutral pressure airflow setup, although this is not filtered here, you can actually just go on Amazon and buy magnetic filters. By the way, magnetic mesh filters, 120 millimeter, all that. You can set the inta intake fan right here. Then you have three intake, three exhaust. Or then, of course, you put the spare intake fan down here. That's why, I mean, I, I, you know, I, can, I can imagine why they didn't. If, the thing is, if they didn't install this fan, it's because it probably doesn't need it to perform adequately, to, get, to keep temps where they need to be. But you do have that option, and it is a, not having that extra reverse fan is nice. Got you working on one similar to this build, thinking about the same specs, but all blue lighting. Newer Gigabyte P PSU should be their BC, prefer perfectly fine at 850 watts and below. That's what we're at. We're at 750. We've not had any issues with uh, Gigabyte power supplies lately. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, my goodness. How did I <laughs> recognize Jeff? It's that Jeff. Hi, Jeff. How's it going? I didn't realize uh, that you were the Jeff. I haven't talked to you in a while, man. How have you been? I'm loving this thing so far. I'm really excited about it. And I was mentioning how it all went down before when it was like, hey, what are you guys doing, what are you guys doing for 4th of July? And you were like, I don't know. What do you got in mind? And then I was like, yeah, they make the Sky 2 in blue, right? And we were like, ooh. There's like a collective, ooh. <laughs> Kenneth Ashley. Hey, nerds. Hey, yourself. How's it going? Uh, Michael Pritchard, what's up? Ginger Me Timber says pretty. I am inclined to agree. Now, we talked about the PC. We have not yet spoken about the bonus. Now, this is, as for those who are, who are just coming in, this is a 4th of July special, okay? It's not yet active. And once 4th of July rolls around, it will be active. And it's not going to be, and yes, by the way, you do have a removable mesh filter here. I wanna make sure that stays in place because this as spec right now is your only intake. When 4th of July hits, that's when this deal drops. And I call it a drop because it's not time limited. This is quantity limited, okay? Not for the PC, but for the other thing. Sorry, I'm just putting this back together and we'll go over it. I'll tell you all about it. But wait, there's more. Oh, sorry, this slots into there. There we go. Boom. There we go. Just making room, because I need room for reasons. So, oh, oops, every time. Always forgetting to take off shipping labels, always, till the last second. 
Okay, so what is the perfect thing to go with a gaming PC? The thing that a lot of people agonize over. Like, oh, I got my PC on the way. What do, what do I get? What monitor do I get? What size? What resolution? I want a game, man. I need a gaming monitor. Well, guess what? You get one. You get a monitor. You get a monitor. Everybody in that 50 people who order this get a monitor. And it's not just any monitor, guys. You see that? See that Z right there? It stands for Zowie. And Zowie is a mainstay in esports. This thing is an esports monster. All right? Now, does that come with any caveats? Yes, it does. I'm glad you asked. And we'll talk about that. I really suffer for my art. Okay. So this is a 27 inch 1080p 165 hertz gaming monitor, okay? This right here is like your entry level to true gaming monitor territory. And I say entry level because the pricing on this is already quite good. You get it. So in order to reach that, in order to accomplish that, they had to do certain things. You know how monitors come with speakers that you never use? Not in this one, out, no speakers. Uh, there are some, fe some features to it that you would be surprised, though, at this price point. You'd be surprised to see. So, uh, yeah, so this is a Zowie XL monitor for eSports. It says it right there, monitor for eSports, okay? They have their target demographic in mind. So if you are like, I want to game, I want to play eSports titles, I want to win, I want to become the champ, this is a great place to start, for real. 27 inches at 1080p, you're not looking at very high pixel density, but that's not the point. It's to get the biggest picture in front of you. 1080p means that it can, it's not as much of a load on your GPU. You can get higher frame rates. And this does have AMD FreeSync, which is, of course, compatible with G-Sync and all of that. And um, yeah, it's, a really, it's, it's, it's really, in its price point, in its, in its class, there are a few that come close. So we're going to check it out. Now this deal is $1699, 13600K, 32 gigs DDR5, one terabyte Gen 4 storage, ARC A770, Z690, in the Morocco Blue Sky 2, and a 27 inch 1080p 165 hertz, and that's true 165 hertz, by the way, not just with like overdrive or whatever. 165 hertz, gaming monitor, all that, plus keyboard and mouse, $16.99. Not too shabby. There's tape over here too, isn't there? I'll bet there is. I'll bet there is. 27 is the max I would use for 1080p, pretty much. I have 27 inch monitors for 1080, is fine for me, but to each their own. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, Dorian E, that's the thing, is it's gonna be lost me at 1080p. It's free, it's free monitor. I have like three 1080p monitors that I use for production, they're fine. And then 4K for content creation. That's the thing, if you're looking to do content creation, this is not the monitor for you. Basically, a lot of content creators that I know will have like, a gaming monitor and a content creation monitor right next to each other. And once for work, once for play. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, I, I can understand if that's not your preference, but that's a preference thing. But the thing is, Zowie is big in esports. Like they're way in it. They're everywhere where esports is happening. So when they say that this is good enough for it, you can trust that it is. If you're looking for something to watch Netflix on, if you're looking for something uh, for, you know, just AAA titles, 
at 4K. Well, the ARC A770 probably isn't the GPU for you either. This is a good pairing. These synchronize well. 1080p is going to just be, the A770 destroys gaming at 1080p. So the, that means the, co the combination had to be good. The combo had to work together. So it comes with a DisplayPort cable. Right there, power cable, of course. Manual and our stand. That's interesting. Ah, that's for the base. There we go. Oh, that's a heavy base. Good, good. I like this base because not like 20, a lot of tw some 27 inch monitors that are a little weightier. And this one's going to be weightier because you notice that the power supply cable is just a cable. When they say eSports, they mean it. And why would that matter? Because it's easier to pack up and move a monitor if you're not lugging around a separate brick. That's built into the panel instead. So it's a heavier panel. So you need a heavier base. So that the weight is annoying, but like you don't want to get somewhere and forget your power brick. Like, oh no, with this, any standard C13 power cord. There you go. It's those little things, those quality of life things. That's what, that's what Zowie's looking at when it comes to calling this legitimately an eSports monitor. I'm looking at this backwards. I'm looking at it backwards. It's, it's facing the other way. Whew, man, one sec, guys. I don't have any channel points or anything here for like hydrate, so y'all can't remind me. Mark Padaleski says, hey man, this looks nice and all, but it looks a lot more expensive than a $1,600 Kronos. You know what? You're right. It does look a whole lot more expensive than a $1,600 Kronos, but it's only $99 more. So it's also a free 1080p, 165 hertz monitor. No reason to look down on 1080p. Yeah, guys, most people still game on 1080p. Going by Steam hardware surveys. Most people still game on 1080p. Remember, it's about matching up what the GPU can do. And it was asked, how are Intel GPUs value-wise? Now, after the updates they've done, very good. One of the best values in GPUs right now. I'm just removing this foam from the outside here. And then we're going to take our base, put that together, and then snap it into the back of the panel. Actually, I'll use my scissors for this. Okay, honestly, as long as the color is accurate enough, then you can do content creation on 1080p. That is not, this is not a monitor for content creation. There's more than just one reason I said that, okay? And if you want speed on a budget, although we are slowly getting there, you still can't necessarily do high, high frame rates IPS on a budget, right? This is a TN panel. So no, it is not for content creation. That's why I said that earlier, and I stand by it. This is for gaming. This is strict, pretty much for gaming and everyday use. So this guy, you got these four screws right here. We're just going to go ahead and there's a little sort of holes there. See that? Pop it in, lock it in, and then we can tighten those screws. Not too bad. Oh, actually, no, you just tighten these right here. I, did I do that wrong? Hold on. There is a manual if all else fails. There we go. 
Okay, I uh, know I did do that right. Yeah, I just I didn't have it quite moved over enough there. There we go, we got it. So just do that, then you lock these right here. It's a solid gaming slash work monitor, pretty much. Thank you, Dave's dimension for the hydrate. Appreciate it. Uh, ignore me, just woke up. It's okay. Yeah, but um, Atramentis Intel GPUs are one of the best values GPUs GPU-wise right now. When they first came out, not so much, but the performance really had an uptick when they updated their drivers. There we go, just locked it in. Ah, oh, man. <sighs> boxes, I am plagued by boxes. It's a blessing, I know. So there is a color mode setting. We'll take a look at that. But there is a feature on here that I think is really cool uh, that you don't see on most monitors in this price class here. And that's on the base here. So let's take a look at this, okay? There are monitors that have smaller bezels, all right? There are monitors that have RGB on the back where you never look at it, right? Uh, there are monitors that have speakers. This one does not have that. That is not what this monitor is for, okay? But when it comes to actual quality of life features, you have swivel. There's even, on the base here, markings for how many degrees it has swiveled. And look at how much you can raise and lower this monitor. That is crazy. This is a really nice stand. Okay, it of course has VESA mounting. And if you're gonna VESA mount it, the stand doesn't mean anything. But you've also got cable management on the bottom and the top. Swiveling, and, wait, hold on, does it? Yes, Are you kidding? Yes, okay. All right, that is OP for a free monitor. Are you kidding me? Because ergonomics are really important, especially if you're competitive in esports or if you're doing work on this thing. Like right here, bam, you just gave yourself a vertical monitor for your OBS or your chat or whatever you're doing uh, for if you like to watch YouTube shorts. I actually just started watching YouTube shorts on a vertical monitor and it changed everything for me. Um, excuse me. I actually just started watching YouTube shorts on a vertical monitor and it made it way better. Ugh, sorry, I hit my mic. As a new user, remember to name your stand. Talking about like being a stand user? Stone Ocean, something like that? Yeah, okay. Some higher end monitors don't even have that. Exactly, exactly. Like they'll throw money into features you will never use. Now to be fair, once you've adjusted this thing, you're probably not gonna adjust it much more anymore. And yes, it does have tilt as well. Tilt, uh, you, you, you have tilt, you, have, you can also rotate, you can pivot. This is OP. Also on the back, this thing I think is really made, uh, it's really made to where if you're competitive in esports, you can travel with it. There you go. Why don't you hang yourself a freaking headset right there? Eh? Eh? So there it is, there you have it. The new QD OLED look amazing if you wanna spend $1,100 on the monitor alone though, yeah. Probably gonna upgrade a couple things this year, definitely considering an Intel GPU now with their drive updates, especially if I want more than eight gigs of VRAM. Yes, 16 on the A770. I wish they would have left the A750 at $200. Prices are gonna fluctuate, always. That's the way the market works, yeah. I had a TN going to IPS was night and day for, yes, for color accuracy, for viewing angles. So here's the thing. Because viewing angles are one of the weaknesses of a TN panel, you need to, it needs to be flexible. You need to be able to move it around. 
in order to get the best viewing angle, to sort of get your line of sight right here. So it is a problem with, those, with these monitors, but they addressed it. I should really mute when I drink because this water bottle is very loud. All right, so what we should do now is power up the PC, plug in this monitor, see how it all goes. Would you recommend this package of content, if content creation, of content creation in addition to gaming, if I have another monitor? Yeah, so the ARC A770 also has AV1 encoding. In fact, it was the first GPU to come to market with an AV1 encoder. Um, I'm right now streaming to YouTube in AV1. Which it's funny, YouTube made AV1 streaming available right after I got five gig internet upload. Like, come on. There were a few 16 gig 770 models like the Sparkle, uh, any, any 770, A770 is supposed to be 16 gigs. The A750 is eight gigs. Yeah, Stan is very decent. Decent monitor and for free, definitely a great deal. Absolutely. So basically, you could buy this PC right now if you want to. You go to SkyTech, you look at the Azure 2 Blue Edition, you can go buy it right now. Use code uh, SWARM in order to get the discount on that, by the way. But there will be 50 units sold that come with the free monitor on 4th of July. Really awesome. I, I, would, I would wait for that, personally. So let's get the PC powered up, and then we'll get the monitor going. I actually need to figure out how to get the monitor going now. Can I do the monitor and PC in the amount of space that I have here? I don't know. I'm going to be blocking my own screens here. So I'm going to put the monitor on this side. It's got to move a few things. So that, that swivel feature is going to come in handy because I'm going to be swiveling this back and forth. <laughs> hey, if it's there, I should use it. I'm running out of space pretty quickly here, huh? Let's do the peels. Oh, that's a nice peel. Okay, I got to hand it to, Mo uh, to, to Montech on this one. Their peels were nicer than NZXT's if you were here for the last stream. That peel was unsatisfactory. I wonder what color they set this to. Looking forward to seeing. Okay, let's get that. Get a little keyboard here. You know, I should be using the ones that it comes with. I'll use the ones that it comes with, yeah. Why not? At least they're matching. They, have, they both have this sort of like braided... Uh, let's lower this. There we go. It's blocking my light. You don't block my light. Uh, they have this braided sort of paracord feeling. USB cables here. And there are two USB 2.0 ports in there. I'd say that's perfect for your mouse and your keyboard. There you go. Now, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you guys looking to swap out your, your freebie keyboard and mouse? Is that still a thing? Because among some of the ones that I've seen, these are some of the better ones. Okay. Oh.
And I do need a monitor. And we've got a display port right here. Thank you for the display port. Zowie. Also, tell the chat how hot it is there, man. I know it's hot. They may not realize that all that sweat isn't just from how awesome that PC is. Aaron's, it's hot here because this is the garage. I have an AC that's blowing cold air on me, but I just put the monitor in directly in front of it. This is a garage in Texas. I'm supposed to have, I was supposed to have an AC unit in here by now. I don't yet have that. Code for Skytech is SWARM, S-W-A-R-M, like the name of our Discord you should join. I miss you guys on Discord, man. I haven't been able to hang out on Discord, on any Discord, not even my own, for a while. I've just been inundated with things. Okay, we're going to need our power cord as well. That's one thing that I love about the, about a monitor that can rotate. Uh, well, I would have to do it from the other side. It only rotates in one direction, but the fact that it makes plugging in cables a bit easier. Oh, I forgot to mention this, but check out the I.O. on this thing. Three different US, uh, three different HDMI and DisplayPort. Now, I think it's HDMI 2.0. Enough for 1080p 165 either way. Um, so you're, if you're looking for like 4K 120, you're not going to get that on this monitor anyway. Uh, so it looks like we have, I'm looking at it myself here real quick. Is that mini display? What is that? Or is that a USB type B and USB type A? Okay, so there's like one USB pass through here and a headphone jack. So it looks like there's one USB pass-through. There's like a USB Type-B cable there, but it didn't come with that. Or is that like mini Type-B? Man, I, I forget what type that is. And then a Type-A here, and then a headphone jack. So if you're running HDMI audio, you can get it, you can plug your headphones into it right there. You can't use 2.0 for VR on PS5. Oh no, well you, want, you don't want a 1080p monitor for PS5 anyway, do you? That's a 4K gaming platform. Busy, busy, the woes of a successful man. Oh, man, it's just busy. That garage in Texas where the temps have reached 110 degrees Fahrenheit several times lately, yep. And garages don't have a breeze. Well, that's what I've got right here. I've got a bit of a breeze. I'll take it. Okay. So I'm gonna have to have cables on the tables here. Sorry, guys. Okay. This is driving me out of my mind. Okay. There we go. I'm all talking about how much easier it makes it to plug in a cable, then I don't utilize that fact. Way to go, Bray. Way to go. By the way, guys, if the, if the, stream, to suddenly, if the stream suddenly turns off, it's because I overloaded the circuit completely. Sorry. Oh, my God. Really? You need 2.1. I understand. What's up, Rovi? How's it going, buddy? How do you like the drip? How are we looking? Not this drip. Yes, I'm very sweaty right now. It's very hot in here. Ladies and gentlemen, I have, I have successfully summoned Justin Roby Tech Roby of Roby Tech fame. Sorry, I can't hear you because of the stupid music here. Oh, man. I was about to make some confessions here. Okay, okay, just for you, Roby, just for you.
There we go. Okay, I was powering this up. Roby got me all flustered. Guys, I got to hang out with Roby over at uh, DreamHack for quite a while. It was really, really cool. He got me a spot for the BYOC. It was super awesome. We played Diablo. It was a ton of fun. He's in Miami, poor guy. Oh, jeez. That sounds terribly awesome. Sounds terrible, I mean. Oops. Don't forget, guys. This right here means that they use the CPU contact frame in here. That's really cool. You're going to get better temps on your Intel CPUs if you use a contact frame. All righty, we are ready. But yeah, I'm I, <laughs> I'm just happy to I'm happy to see Roby. That's good, and uh, yeah, I uh, I can imagine that he's uh, he's having a terrible time over there in Miami. I mean, at, at least you're also dealing with the heat, Roby. The ritual is complete. We have a Roby. Somebody tell him to to check the vod later so you can hear me say that he's a beautiful man, and I can't wait to see him again soon. What is this? That's weird. Does this lock the... Okay, I'll have to show you guys this later. It's really weird. I don't know what it is. Okay. I'm running out of room to do stuff. Let's power it up! If we're ready. And we are... Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Hey buddy, what's up? Hey, what's up buddy? How's it going? We wanted to come, we could we couldn't hear you because of the really loud music. Yeah, and we're calling you on your screen. Hold on, somebody else wants to say hi. Hey. Hey, what's Hey, are we interrupting your stream? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Love it. Uh, not much. Just uh, just showing off a PC that comes with a free monitor. It's a sweet deal. A PC that comes with a free monitor? Yeah. Dude, what PC is that? Uh, it's from SkyTech. It's a special oh. uh, Fourth of July thing. But how how are you? For, forget about that. How are you guys doing over there? We're good. We just got well. I got to we're in Miami for a project, but Justin's flight was you know delayed rerouted so we're eating dinner right now we're just thinking about you just want to say hey and then saw that you were streaming so we thought it'd be fun to interrupt your stream <laughs> y'all can interrupt my stream anytime <laughs> anytime the music is so loud in here so it's hard to hear you but uh just want to say hey justin just wants to say something hold on okay just say thanks for repping the shirt and we, we were, we're trying to support the stream while we could Hey, you know what? Mutual support's what it's all about, man. <laughs> anyway, let's go, geeks. <laughs> you heard him, guys. Something along those lines. All right, you have fun over there, buddy. You too. Bye. Talk to you later, man. See ya. <laughs> Do we have clips? Is that a thing for YouTube streams? I don't even know. But Roby and Deb, they're, they're, they're the best. Just really, really good people. Really good people. All right, uh, man, I, that, that's, that's awesome. And it's funny because you hear about like, oh, his flight got delayed and redirected and all kinds of, that, like seriously, that's the rea a big reality of a job like this is that you're just like, Especially for Roby. I mean, I don't travel, I travel just a fraction of what Roby does. 
but still, like, that's just one of the realities you got to deal with doing this. You can clip into shorts. Nice. Looks like the display is missing. The display was off. GLHF. Love that. Look at that. Yeah, it was just turned off. I didn't turn it on. Timestamps will help. Okay, no cable connected. That's a lie, but all right. Looks like they set the color to blue in here. It's like a really nice sort of washed out blue. It's probably hard for you guys to tell because there's like this now here, but yeah. Huh, maybe we got a bad uh, display port cable. Well, that's nice and convenient for me. All right. I know I just had an HDMI. Oh, can, we can try HDMI. We shouldn't have to do anything drastic just yet, guys. We're just going to try a different cable, a different type of cable at least. Maybe this thing doesn't like starting out with DisplayPort. Who knows? We do have a lot of options when it comes to HDMI, though. Like that one right there. Did it turn off for power savings? It probably turned off for power savings. Man, that was <laughs> that's surreal. Like, there you go, guest starring Roby. Dang it, not enough notification time for me, boo. Dan, you just missed a call from Roby. And Deb, and Deb. But what's up, buddy? Oh no, it sounds like a terrible time in Miami. I know, right? Well, I'll perform the Kronos, though. There are different versions of the Kronos. I'm not sure which ones you're talking, which one you're talking about, what the specs are. Um, Mark Padaleski. It would be nice if it would, like, w w if it doesn't post, it's not going to outperform anything. Okay, so I had turned it off. Maybe I need to swap inputs. HDMI 2. I, should, I guess that's the one. Hey, there we go. All right, it just didn't like uh, DisplayPort. I mean, it didn't like that DisplayPort. It could be a bad cable or it could be something else. I don't know. Let me just get past all this nonsense right here. What's up, Dan? Windows setup might not have the Intel drivers installed yet. Might have to turn it off and on again to attempt HDMI. That's, we're good. I know that there's a delay, so. Look, I want someone to type now in chat. Type now, the word now, and I'll tell you when I see it. This is giving you, this is giving you an idea of how much of the delay there would be. It might be about 15 seconds. There we go, right there. Just got it. That's how long the delay is. So now you know. Just now saw it. So about a 15 second delay. What's up, Onware? How's it going, buddy? Haven't talked to you in a minute. Haven't talked to a lot of people in a minute. That was the first time I talked to Roby since, since Dallas. <sighs> you know what's funny? When I first started this job, I thought that I would be struggling every week to be like, what do I do for content? I don't know what to do. I'm out of content. Oh my God, no. 
That is not the case at all. There's way too much, if anything. Okay. About 20 seconds, 30 seconds. All right, cool. It's been a while. I hope you're doing great. I, you know. <sighs> it's funny because I'll tell Ari, my girlfriend, like, oh, I just got this other deadline, and then I can take a breath, and then I can rest. And then she's like, there's going to be another one after that. And I'm like, yeah, there's going to be another one after that. I, like, guys, I need to make a video just about all the things I'm behind on. There's videos from CES I didn't get around to posting. CES in January. Like, I struggle so much with that. Because at a certain point, it's like, well, this isn't relevant anymore. But thankfully, the at least one of the pieces from CES is not time sensitive. Like, I could post it now, and it would be fine. Uh, it's my second interview with Rob Teller. And that's like not necessarily CES specific. Excuse me for just a moment. Did I? And he's just like one of the most interesting people there is. Like he's one of my favorite people to talk to. So I feel bad that I hadn't posted that yet. All right, one sec. Okay. Yeah, I feel that. If you need help with anything, let me know. Uh, can't find the stream clip section in Discord. Toaster, really? I thought we had a clips section. All right, time to do all this nonsense. Okay. Now I am going to do it to where I have it connected to both the streaming PC and this monitor and just duplicate the screens. I'm just getting this done first. Also, I'd like to go into the BIOS if possible because there's something I wanted to look at. Ah, uh, skip. I mean, look, this is it. When you get one of these, you're just going through a process like this. It's like you're just going one thing after another after another. I will say that I've connected my, uh, on a previous system, I haven't done it in the last couple, but I've connected my phone before and it's pretty convenient sometimes. Cause like, imagine texting someone, but you're like typing on a keyboard, you know, like you're doing it through your PC. Pretty, you know, pretty cool, but decline i don't want office decline decline just de decline everything guys you don't need any of this i mean unless you want game pass for 10 bucks or whatever i don't know brent brown what's up how's it going welcome to the stream bought the 4070 nebula from skytech and use your code your video convinced me it'd be perfect for what i wanted thank you welcome that is a great system Low latency can be around seven to 10 seconds. Well, the thing is I have a 15 second chat delay from back when I was being bombarded with uh, 
with, by that one troll. So, sounds like I need some teammates for content creation. I mean, honestly, I... I <laughs> it would be great if I g could just get in front of the camera, yammer for a while, and have someone else take care of everything else. I would love that. If I could just build PCs, review PCs, and just do the talking part and that, that part, and then just... Because I have chronic fatigue syndrome. I've had it for a very long time, and it is not very easy to be... Because, like, I've had nine-to-five jobs. I've had jobs where I work 65 hours a week. That was more manageable than this. Because this job is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Constantly, we're, you know, we're trying to keep up with email, falling behind. Trying to keep up with videos, falling behind. Like, trying, trying to remember what, 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 was I, what did I need to finish, do the final edit on and get out there. Thumbnails, descriptions, social media, uh, meetings, calls, just like, I'm blessed that I'm able to do this for a living. Like, I would not trade it for the world. But I will also not at any point try to convince you it's easy. It's not. And with chronic fatigue syndrome, it's, it sometimes feels impossible. It feels impossible sometimes. So, yeah. Okay, so we have a pretty clean version of Windows here. The only things that we have that could be considered bloatware is ASRock's software. You know what? Let's get the other screen going, and I'll, I'll show you so you can see it. Okay. Social media to some nightmare by itself. Yeah, you know. System's running, so it's not that important, but I'm curious what that light on the top right of the motherboard is as it looks like a debug light. It says VGA, but maybe it's because it's the Intel one and it's like <laughs> not used to that. I don't know. Windows does enough bloatware on its own these days, Instagram, etc. Oh, yeah. Hell, Disney Plus. Like, come on. Are you only streaming on YouTube now, or is this stream a YouTube exclusive? Yeah, it's all, I can... The thing is, Twitch made it to where I would love to stream this on both YouTube and Twitch, but I can't because they won't let me stream simultaneously. So I choose instead, you know, because I'm a partner on Twitch, so I choose instead to, to stream these on, on YouTube because YouTube keeps the VOD forever. And then we can, you know, we, we can either save it locally or just like download it from YouTube and like edit it, do all that stuff. You could even edit it on YouTube if you're just cutting it down to make it shorter, which is something I need to do probably. I really need to do that. Okay, let me go to display settings real quick. And we are going to duplicate these displays. There we go. All right. Let's see if I've got... What? Okay. All right, there you go. There's the system. It's like I need to find work at Texas to help you out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something where I basically need to have a Game Pass is pretty legit. You know, I I, I honestly, I've gotten so far away from uh, Xbox and PlayStation. Like, I still have my Switch. Yeah, that's and Nintendo is super exclusive with their titles. That's just that's just it. Unless you want to play modded, modded, whatever. You're not supposed to do that. Not legal, whatever. Um you have to have a Nintendo console to play Tears of the Kingdom, which I'm not going to miss that. It's my favorite franchise, Legend of Zelda. So, um, wait, what? Oh, there you go. So you showed me where the clips was. Nice. Systems, okay, yeah. Can you do that on iPhone? Do what? Oh, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. That might be more if you have an Apple PC be an overwhelming effort and that's just for normal people and none of us are normal yeah 
Uh, dual stream on kick. Look, I'm not a perfect person, and I'm not, like, real uppity with this and that, but there are some issues I've got with some of the stuff going on there at kick, you know. Especially with the way things were earlier on, and I know that they they have locked down on some things, but really not much. It's still pretty much uh, the Wild West out there. So I don't know about all that. Really good point. Yeah, YouTube does a lot of things better than Twitch, although the chatting experience is better on Twitch for sure. Oh, yeah, just the community in general, the way that they do community stuff. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. Bloatware, nope. All you got here, these are links. That's all these are. These are links. That's it. And then Microsoft Edge, ASRR, so that's ASRock RGB LED. There you go. And they did set this to a custom look. Now, there's something I need to see here. So what we're going to do, let me put my drive in here. I'm not sure which one it is. You see, I've actually got like two of these M.2 enclosures. I'm not sure which one's the right one that has my benchmarking stuff and the uh, game library. Look, my, one of my main issues with streaming here on YouTube is that it, I mean, of course, it puts it up as a VOD, like, but, but it's almost like a video, right? And I am incapable. Oh, wrong, wrong. Well, no, I guess I can check it here. I'm incapable of just like getting to being uh, uh, succinct. You know, I, can't, I just can't. I'm not good at it. I like to, to just ramble. I like to just chat with you guys. No, that's not it. Okay. It's the other one. I like to just chit chat, you know, it's, it's just, it's nice for me. I miss y'all. I miss streaming three times a week, but like at this point, I don't know if when I go back to it, if I can even do three times a week, I might have to start with two. Okay. There we go. Okay, first off, we got to fix the main thing here. The most important thing, taskbar alignment to the left. Thank you very much. And I like to hide it as well. And also let's, well, oh, I should just let that open. Okay. Let's go to, see which one we're looking at here. Events display, the Zowie is running at 60 Hertz. I can run, bam, 165 without messing with anything in the settings. You couldn't see that happen. Well, you could see that happen. But like, keep changes, bam, 165 hertz. I did not go into this monitor settings and put it in overdrive. That is a true 165 over HDMI. That's it. You don't even need to run DisplayPort if you don't want to. Okay, and of course, the other one's going to be at, okay, it's running at 60. Neat. Cool. So, uh, one more thing. Let me just see if, if, I, if it identifies. So yeah, it's just gonna show one, two on both of them. All right, whatever. Okay. So let's get into here, into that, and just move our benchmarking stuff over here. And we'll just run the Steam library right off of this drive. I should honestly get the newest version of... Oh, you know what? No. I'm, I should probably just download Hardware Info. Oh, God, I have to do this. I, like, I want to ask Skytech... To, uh, Jeff, I want to ask you guys to put Chrome on here for people, but, like, what if they don't want Chrome and they want Firefox or Opera? You know, like... You got to decline on that. Don't take my data. Just... No! Let's just get the latest version, and I'll get to save it on the drive, too, so I have the latest version. I always like, you got to take a second. 
Take a second and look. It's hwinfo.com. That looks correct to me. I could just do the portable one, but no, let's just. That's an ad. It says it's an ad. Don't do it. Just wait. I, I hate this. Like, this is their site. Why would they have stuff like that? Like, that's really annoying. But that's why it's free. It's free software. That's how they, this ads, that's how they pay for it. Let the people choose. Yeah, yeah, I know. And so I was like, I want to ask you for that, but like, it's not, it doesn't make sense. I just don't like to do the whole, I, I don't like being gaslit by Edge browser, okay? It's so bad and so cringy. If anyone, if any of you guys who have installed Windows Fresh and gone to download another browser, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and I'll show you. It is so freaking cringy. Like, look, all we got to do is we go to Bing here, right? And we say down. Oh, okay, it's just a wrong keyboard, wrong keyboard. Okay. Download Chrome. There's no need to download a new browser. Microsoft recommends using Microsoft Edge for a fast, secure, and modern web experience that can help you save time and money. Really? Yeah? All oh, your passwords are more secure here. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Uh, Microsoft Edge runs on the same technology as Chrome with the added trust of Microsoft. Let's make a drinking game. Take a sip. Or every time you see the word Microsoft, I say sip because you'll get alcohol poisoning otherwise. It's so stupid. Just that that's why, that's why people don't like you. That behavior right there, it's toxic. Why don't you like me? Because you're asking why I don't like you. That's cringeworthy behavior of the highest caliber. I actually have the Chrome installer on that drive. I just needed to show this to you guys. I needed to show you. So many people use Edge. I know it got better, but I don't like that kind of thing. I don't like that kind of crap. It just really bugs the heck out of me. It just, it just, it grinds my gears. I don't know, but Edge always makes me frustrated. Firefox for the win. I hear DuckDuckGo is launching a browser. Well, there, that's, that's going to be the one. The download button ads are the absolute worst. Ad blocker is first thing I install. Stature, that's something you generally don't want to say to a YouTuber because that's kind of our, kind of our, our paycheck right there. <laughs> but okay. I mean, I get it. Yo, Bray, you excited for Starfield? Like, yeah. I mean, I played Elite Dangerous for a little while. That was pretty cool. It was really cool. But I just don't get much time to game. I really don't. All right, finish up. There we go. All right, let's just run it with the, I want to see the summary real quick. Because, um, Jeff, I got to tell you, man, would love it if y'all started listing frequencies on your spec sheets uh, or on your, on your, your pages for each pre-configured system, because I never know. And I, what do you mean there's a new version? Oh, it's a beta. I was so mad. For, I, I was like blindingly mad. I saw, I saw like starbursts of light in my eyes from how mad I got just in that one moment. Oh my God. <laughs> I just downloaded it and it's like, there's a new version. Really? Okay. Anyway. Ha <laughs> ha. So we're looking at 5200. Okay. So it's DDR5 5200. Okay. Good to know. That's why you have no friends, Explorer. You're so right, says Brent Brown. Thank you. Those are my favorite words. It needs to be a clip, the Edge browser rant. DBZ Warrior FC reporting. Welcome, DBZ Warrior. 
How's it going? There's a Metro version of Firefox in the Microsoft Store too, but I still rather use a normal version. I keep Firefox on a USB drive also. Hey, if you, if you have one you're used to, that's awesome. Frequencies for the CPUs. Yeah, it's showing right there. Hold on, let's just get to our sensors. Okay. So we're gonna do our typical thing where we run. Actually, I, I, I honestly, this is the first 13600K I've received. I had one for a DIY build I was gonna do, but this is the first one I've received, so I need to check what the numbers are supposed to be. Is that that's voltages core clocks core temperatures uh, look look uh, uh, th the 13600k can run on like a vetru v5 and do all right a 360 millimeter aio is gonna kick butt like that i have no worries about cpu temps the only concern that i have is the ambient temperature in here of course okay you see. Okay, let's uh, let's open up uh, Cinebench. Yeah. Let's see what our max clocks get to. Maximum currently. Okay, five gig five gigahertz five point zero eight gigahertz. Dang. All right. All right, we're just going to run one real quick. Do not disappear on me. I swear to you. Okay. <sighs> no, I didn't mean to close the whole dang thing. What the hell? Why would it do that? <sighs> I'm running out of mouse pad space here. Yes, sensors only, start, okay. All righty then, and let me just restart this. Reset min max averages, bam, let's go. Wait, how did it hit, when did it hit 100C? Why is it saying 100C? What is this? Are you guys seeing this? What the hell? Is that what you were talking about? Jeff? Oh, no, you said frequencies. Wonderful edition of Bray Live After Dark. Oh, yeah. Really miss you streams, too. Ah, oh, sorry, guys. Thank you. Uh, yeah, 5200 was a mega transfer per second for the RAM. Why does it say 100C? What is this? What is this? Why is it doing that? Okay, let me double check something real quick. Jeff, this right here, this right here means you guys use the CPU contact plate, right? The fact that the integrated solution, mounting solution is off. It's also saying 224 watts power. Everyone thinks 13600Ks are cool. I mean, you can run them on air, on you know moderate air coolers. They'll they'll do better with more cooling. But why? What happened? Hold on. Let me reset this. I'm gonna reset this and run it again. Okay. What the heck? Dude is popping right up to 100C. Well, no, look, st uh, Stature, if they forgot the paste, this would have just shut down. And then the frequency, the core clocks drop, right? Because our max was 5.08 5 gigahertz, and it drops down to 4,200, wait, no, meg megahertz. Uh, no, no, okay, no, 5.08 gigahertz, and it drops down to 4.2 4 gigahertz. 
or 4,200 megahertz. So I don't know why it's doing that. Sounds like an ASRock feature. It is the BIOS settings. Let's take a look. This looks like a 13700K. No, it's, it's got the, the cores of a 13600K. Besides, 13700K on a 360 should be fine. All right, let's see if we can get into BIOS. Now, in order to show the BIOS to you guys, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the monitor here. So we'll just have this as the monitor. Yeah, 22,366. 22, that seems, is that low? I think that's low for a 13600K. So, I mean, which would make sense if the temps are freaking out. All right. Well, this is going to be my first time really messing with an ASRock BIOS in a very long time. Let's see how I do, I guess. Basically, the motherboard allows unlimited voltage. Okay. So, you're saying, because I know, I know that there have been Intel technicians who have been like, hey, if your CPU is not running at 100 degrees Celsius, you're leaving performance on the table. If that's the case here, I get it. But I don't know. It seemed to have been affecting the uh, max frequency. So let's go ahead and give this a, let me close this stuff out, get a restart in. I've never tried to use BIOS directly through a capture card. We'll see how that goes. Oh, updates. Okay, interesting. What updates? I mean, you could be the next JSU Sense where he was able to run benchmarks and get scores without thermal paste from the PC repair challenge. Oh, wow. Motherboard's probably overvolting it. My crazy PC you saw with the dual 420. If I let it run on default BIOS settings, it will throttle. That's crazy. Okay, so I haven't, again, I haven't messed with an ASRock BIOS in a while. So let me see what I'm looking at here. So yeah, we're running 5,200 mega transfer per second RAM. It's Gale 16 gig DDR5, two 16 gig sticks. The NV2 is right there. Load Intel base power limit is enabled. Base power limit is enabled. Isn't that the thing? Isn't that the setting? Don't we need to disable that for it not to have the limitation? Because again, I, I like I haven't I haven't done any like any overclocking with 13th gen myself, or like messed with it too much. Dude, that's the the tragic thing, honestly, about the fact that I don't get to do much DIY is that I'm rusty on some really fundamental stuff. So let's see, let's see if we can get to let's see F6 advanced mode. Okay. Auto, auto, CPU config. My face cam is like blocking this. <laughs> oh, goody. Here, maybe I'll disable my face cam. You guys don't need to see me, do you? All right. Let's take a look. Yep, advanced mode. That, the delay is going to drive us crazy here. P-core ratio, auto, auto. Everything's just set to auto. Adaptive voltage is enabled. Max non-turbo performance mode. It will keep CPU flex ratio till OS handoff. Yeah, all the way to the bottom. All right. CPU core current limit. Current limit is 307. Auto TJ max. Thermal velocity boost voltage optimizations. The service controls thermal, ba thermal based voltage optimizations for processors that implement the Intel thermal velocity boost feature. Okay, so TVB, that's the one, right? That's the, uh, that's enabled. So if we disable that, is that gonna basically bring it under control to where it like unlimited current limit? Okay current limit. Let me get out of this. Unlimited current limit. Okay. Well, that's, there's no changing that. So it's just set to auto.
Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at. It is not. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. There we go. So we want to like sneaks into chat like nothing happened. I know what you did, London boy. Okay, so if we uh, hit, let me see, unlimited current limit. If we disable that, that's probably going to put a limit on the current. So that's, I don't know. This is one of those things. And okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put my face cam back on because this is gonna be for the video. And I'll move it over here. Okay. So this is one of those things where it's gonna be at your discretion, whether you want to have it be unlimited and run up against thermal limits as often as it can to give you the most performance possible or to have it be more limited. Uh, personally, I think that most people would just be fine having it limited, getting, you probably get a little better longevity out of your hardware, but that's speculation. I can't say for sure. These are designed to run right up to 100 degrees Celsius and hang out there and be okay. Do you want that though? That's the question. So basically this is our option right here. It was set to auto before and we have set it to disabled. That is CPU core unlimited current limit. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Another thing I wanted to look at. So we'll go back. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to do that. What I'm wondering is where will we find where do we find a resizable bar? I wanted to see if that was enabled because that's a, an important thing for ARC GPUs. They say you need to have it enabled. One sec. Oh, that's step one. Okay. All the certain Dark 600 Ks we've done in Prime 95 have pegged 100 C, then would creep down to about 80 to 85 C. Okay. Look, here's the thing. These days, old school guys like me, like to give you an example of how old school I am, I'm still surprised every time my mouse works in a UAFI. Okay. Because back in the day when I was really into messing with BIOS, you just didn't have that. Uh, times have changed, of course. So old school guys like me, we're going to see the CPU throttling and be like, that's bad. It needs to constantly stay under a certain temperature because we're just used to that. But now CPUs on both sides, both Team Blue and Team Red, are designed to run right up to thermal limits and see what you've got in terms of cooling capacity. And then that determines the performance that you get. So it, it takes a little bit of a, sh a shift of mind, a mind shift, if you will, for me to wrap my head around the fact, even though it's been, um, you know, a while since Alder Lake came out and then Raptor Lake and also 7000 Series Ryzen. It takes a, a little while to wrap my head around that, even though those have been out for a bit. It's just crazy to think about, but that's the way things are going. Toaster, you got it. Thank you. Yeah, it's startling, says Ginger Me Timbers. Yeah, you, well, you know. Who, me? I'm nobody. That should be an easy mode. Okay. Oh, you say that's step one. Step one is enabling... Uh, rebar, resizable bar. I have seen that in easy mode for MSI. Uh, oh, my camera might be in front of it. Hold on a second. Uh, nope. Wow, that pun though. Fantastic tuning. No, it's not here. Bring back the blue and gray BIOS menu. 
Above 4G decoding and CAM are part of the same setting. Above 4G decoding. Back into advanced mode. And my face cam's blocking. I'm just a nuisance. I'm a nuisance, and I need to be dealt with. I need to be done away with. Get me out of here. All right. So, okay, Jeff, here is what I, from what I understand, when it comes to, like, motherboard stuff, the guy I watch is Buildzoid, uh, or actually Hardcore Overclocking. Like, the dude knows his stuff. When it's just motherboard, he lives in UFIs and tuning RAM and doing all, the kinds, all that kind of stuff that I don't really do anymore. Uh, but his, his take on ASRock's UEFI is that it is not pretty. It's got odd organization, but they give you every feature, every single feature from the most budget-oriented motherboard all the way to their top-of-the-line uh, motherboards. So it's hard to tell where it would be, but not under main. Uh, it's probably here in advanced or tool, but probably in advanced. So let's see. Maybe it's under chipset or super, uh, super IO, ACPI. I don't know. No. Oh, because that's for the uh, that's for the PCI uh, uh, PS2 cable, PS2 connector. That's on the. It does have a PS2 connector, and not PlayStation 2. Okay. Hang on, I need to boot the stream on another computer. Check my Asrock BIOS for you. Well, you could do that, uh, but no, not NV. Would by way to be under NV. Let's look at chipset. Okay, above 4G decoding. Okay, this is what you were saying. This is what our chaos was saying. Clever access memory. Is that it? Is that what you were saying? Advanced chipset config above 4G decoding. Why don't they just call it re resizable bar? Clever access memory. What the hell does that mean, ASRock? Spoken to Intel a few times about enforcing more reasonable BIOS settings for motherboard manufacturers, like the stupid naming conventions. Like, seriously, the fact that resizable bar was in easy mode on a UAFI, and I, I, know, I know what you're talking about. I just don't know exactly which one it was. I believe it was MSI. That should be standard, because that can make a huge difference for their own GPUs, for Intel's GPUs. Yeah, I see. I don't. I, I, honestly, you saw. We saw the score. We have it recorded. It was like twenty-two thousand six hundred something. So we'll see what the difference is now with the actual voltage limitation on. I don't think it's going to be too crazy. But it looks like this is on. So this is enabled, and that's good. We want resizable bar enabled for any Intel GPU. So we're good. All right, so we hit exit, and we will save changes and exit. Corn limited. Okay, so we got that to disabled. So yes, let's see what this does. Because right now, we might have a little walkthrough through what we just did on how to disable that, if that is what you desire. Again. Okay. I did have it right. There we go. Oh, cool. Neat. Uh, all right. I'm just going to go ahead and gonna go reach over here and go ahead and power that back on. Let's see what happens. Jeff, what you might want to do 
is have your guys disable it. But that's yet, so here's the thing. The type of user who wants that, who wants unlimited voltage, is generally savage, savage, <laughs> is generally savvy enough to do it themselves. Hey, look at that, see? We, uh, we good? Keyboard's not lighting up. One second. There we go. Well, okay. That was an adventure for sure. I just plugged it into a different uh, USB. There's something that's a challenge for us SIs and something that we have to consider when purchasing motherboards that we offer. You never know. You never even know BIOS revision to BIOS revision what they will set. Yep. I know. Like, no, one, no one's going to look at that and be like, oh, that's Skytech's fault because they made that UEFI for ASRock. Like, of course you didn't. Boot loop incoming. No, no, no. No boot loops. No boot loops. Have you seen the 4070 Skytech Azure pre-built? Recently bought one from Newegg. Looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I probably looked at that in a previous video. Someone actually earlier just said, hey, I got this 4070 system that you recommended. But I generally don't recommend buying from Newegg uh, because even though they're on their best behavior now after they got called out by Gamers Nexus, they were still the type of people that get in trouble with Gamers Nexus. So I recommend buying directly from the SI generally. Now, that's not to say don't ever buy, buy their stuff from Amazon or whatever because like that... Wait, what happened to my monitor? Why isn't my monitor showing? Did I do something? I wasn't paying attention. I probably swapped what HDMI it's in. I thought it auto-detected it, because it did put it on the correct one before. Ah, uh, looks like it's getting it now. Speaking of BIOS versions, I'm on 331 for ROG. Wonder what version we are on. There we go. Got it. Just unplugged it from the GPU, plugged it right back in, and there we go. Let's go to our display settings and make sure all of our refresh rates are correct. Okay, go to advanced display, because I did just change that around. 165 and 60. Okay, cool. All right. Now, we're going to run Cinebench again along with uh, Hardware Info. Yes, yes, sensors only. And we'll see what the temps do and what, the, what scores we get. We ready? Let's go. No, nope, it jumped right back up to 100 again. Right up to there. 101. Okay. And dip down to 98. So it's clearly like working with what it what it's got for the uh, for the CPU cooling. And I mean, it, we're we're staying at. I, I I should honestly bring up all this all the cores so we can see all the core clocks. But yeah, 22, 523, same score, just about. Not much different there. Okay. Well, look, the way it's currently configured, it's going to butt up against the thermal limit, and that's the way it's designed to work. Um, there is, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not any kind of, like, overclocking professional. A lot of this stuff changes from generation to generation. My general thing is to see, like, hey, is this thing performing? Is it constantly o overheating? And when it's not running this, which is the, look, Cinebench is not a realistic test. It's not meant to be. It's a synthetic benchmark that is basically putting your CPU through more work than you will likely ever put it through in a very short amount of time. 
It's just before this generation, we were able to like run this and actually get an idea of, oh, this is what the cooling is like. And we likely have to set an offset to get it in check. Well, even with a 360 millimeter on a 13600K, when the BIOS just lets it run full tilt, they will overheat. Well, see, 100 is not overheating. That's just the thermal limit. And I know I'm not explaining that to you if you don't know it, if you do know that. But like, I want to be careful about the wording there. It's not overheating. It is heating up to its limit. It's like, you know, it's, it's doing the speed limit. It's getting up to what it is allowed to do safely. If it was hitting like 105, 110, and then shutting down, that's a failure. I just wanted to see if we could tweak it into place to where it's going to give us... But the thing is, what do we have to compare it against in order to see whether it's cooling well or not? I mean, it finished Cinebench fast. We can't expect it to get like near 40,000, like a 12, uh, 13, 900K or KS. We can't expect that. This is nowhere near what that CPU is. So... You know, what are you going to do? It's just over half the amount of cores and not as, you know, I guess around 14K. No, nah, lost that bit. Yeah. Worst we've seen 13600K is when pegging the 100C limit is two P cores starting to throttle, but they are alternating. Okay, let's go to our core temperatures, drop that down, and let's actually record this. So we're going to reset the values and run this again. Yeah, it's not the whole CPU. It's just a few and it's gonna pop around. It's gonna go from one performance core to another. So that's how it's going to attempt to handle the load, shared load around. It's really hanging around three, four, and five. Now, another thing is We're using a contact frame. And a CPU contact frame can be great when it comes to helping get even temperatures across the IHS. However, it can also be, you know, it's easy to sort of misalign it or put a little bit too much torque on one screw and then it defeats the purpose. Well, if you notice, CPU is pulling 250 watts. That, the max power listed by Intel for the chip is 181. No, I know, I know. I don't like the I don't like it pulling more than it should, more than it's listed to pull. That makes me nervous. Yeah. Yeah, max wattage here this time 234 234 watts. And the power max power listed by Intel for the ship is around 180. So it's really the ASRock motherboard doing that, and uh, we would have to go in and really mess with it for a while in order to uh, set it to where it's not going over 180, 181 watts. That's what I would, uh, that's why I thought it looked like a 13700K. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, that's something I probably wouldn't ship it like that. Personally speaking, I wouldn't ship it to where it's pulling more power than Intel sets as a recommended thing. We know, we know the shenanigans that motherboard manufacturers are pulling right now. Just look at the 7800X3D debacle with ASUS. What a mess. And uh, it takes some, you know, basically the, the onus is upon the system integrator, unfortunately, to be like, all right, we're going to ship 300 of these. Let's dig into one of them and see how it's acting. All right, and, and maybe one more. All right, cool. So this one, yeah. It's not going to do us any favors. Let's make a preset for the BIOS and load it into every system. You know what I mean? That might be the way to do it. I think it was set to like 300. What is the price of this PC, says Raul, Raul Capellan. Well, 1699 for the PC and the monitor. Hold on, let me switch my screen. I haven't been on full face, face cam for a while. This is a special deal that's coming up for 4th of July. You're getting the system with a 13600K and an Intel Arc A770 GPU, 32 gigs of DDR5 on a Z690 motherboard in the Morocco Blue, Azure, the Morocco Blue Sky 2 case from Montech. It is, this is the Azure 2 from Skytech. And on the 4th of July, you can buy this right now for $16.99, but on the 4th of July, there's going to be 50 systems available. 
that are also going to come with this 27 inch 1080p 165 hertz zowie monitor for free and that's going to be on the 4th of july and you can use code swarm s-w-a-r-m to get a further discount on that but i would say because you know if you go into the bios where, where that setting we changed is you can set that limit okay so did you guys set it to 300 my thing about setting a limit so high is that I worry for the longevity of the part. Yeah, between MSI and ASUS, we've had to tweak. Yeah. Okay, BIOS is up to date at 331 since March 30th, but I don't remember updating any BIOS around that time. Like, I get it. I get the, 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 the desire to have this thing perform at its peak capacity, and that's admirable. However, most people don't need it to do anything more than what the 13600K, 13600K can do out of the box. And it has a ton of cores. It's a really well-rounded CPU. I would say let it run it at stock config and anyone who is savvy enough to overclock it themselves or mess with those settings, allow them to do so. Just like a browser, right? Load the stock thing or maybe tweak it to where it's gonna run stock what Intel spec'd it to run and let the user decide. They leave it on unlimited and only have overly high limits. Yeah. Well, it seems great when considering the warranty and monitor and the Intel A770 is no slouch either. Maybe 1440p capable even. Yeah. Or really high refresh rate, 1080p, for sure. I wouldn't have let the system leave QC with the VGA debug light on either unless it happened after shipping. Co Forgotten freshness, what's up? It says code swarm for the win. I mean, I don't know what's going on with the VGA debug light. Debug light. I would say um, if I had just a loose uh, NVIDIA GPU here, I'd pop it in there and see if that goes away, see if it's just ASRock being like, Intel has GPUs? What? We didn't know. I totally agree. I wish some other word manufacturers agreed, but because it makes it so hard on the SIs, but setting their defaults so ridiculously unlocked. Well, if you, if you guys go in and you get all the settings hammered out, you can then save that config, right? And then load it onto each system as they're being built. It's an extra step and good Lord, that's gonna add a lot of time over time, like with a lot of systems done. These fans move a good amount of air, I gotta tell you that. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think in this case, it's probably worth it. I, now to me, it's not a deal breaker. To me, it's just like, there are so many systems that are gonna be running like this. It's, it's kind of the norm right now. But it worries me a bit. If this was running like a 30 series high-end GPU, it would worry me more because that GPU has its own like, you know, power spikes, transient power spikes it likes to do. So it needs that extra headroom. But man, this thing running like 240 watts is kind of crazy. It's, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, getting too old for this. I'm telling you. Like, it's, that's an i5 running 240, 250 watts. An i5 is nuts. That should be fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Remember, I think 120 watts was left for a CPU. Look at that, 250 watts. I know, I know. But look, this is the new normal. It is, it is. And mother, well, this is what motherboard manufacturers want. They want to have the highest, they have that, want to have the highest performing motherboards. They want to just like give you max performance. Oh, and you're just like, I just want to play League of Legends or whatever. I don't need it to be a furnace. Like, we're good. We don't have to go that far. And they're like, maximum, go! That 307 watt limit was kind of nuts. Yeah, I, yeah. We've tried that before. Systems just boot loops. Really? Hmm. Unless you're fully loading your CPU 24-7, you should be fine even if you still would be fine. Yeah, no, this, like I said, this is probably totally fine. It is, it is. And it doesn't necessarily warrant a whole like, oh God, we gotta change everything, you know? Uh, but it boot loops, huh? It actually does not work because the RAM doesn't like it. Huh. 
Like, it's easy for me to just say it. It's easy for me to just say things. You know, you should do this. But thank you for telling me when something's not easy or it's not working, because I need to know that stuff. I'm upgrading to a MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk gaming motherboard. Old motherboard B450 CPU is Ryzen 5 4500. Huh. Is there something wrong with the B450? I would say maybe a CPU upgrade might be better, and it should be compatible with the B450. And, and high water doesn't go away on x64 architecture. True. Doc Holiday, very true. I've seen the 13900KS pull almost 400 watts. It's a bit insane. Absolutely. And everyone looks at me whenever I'm like, I don't know, guys. I think, I think we should go with a high, bigger power supply. Like, I'm the crazy one. No, it's the trends, man. That's where it's going. ARM is the only answer. ARM, Doc Holiday, is the answer to the question nobody asked. <laughs> But it is cool in its own way, that's for sure. Um, but no, uh, no software developers are like, oh, ARM, that would be a great way to make money. We should develop for ARM for desktop applications. Unfortunately, we, you know, hey, someday, maybe. Even AM5, while they use less power, they'll still run on the hotter side by default. When you go to eco mode, though, you go to eco mode on like a 7900X, oh boy. That's good stuff. And like I said, 13900K is pushing 1.5 volt core, 1.5 V core on some boards we had. That's why other than XMP, we basically leave defaults. 13900K can, oh, let me, let me get the games thing going. Hold on one second, guys. You got the library here. I just need to install Steam real quick. You don't need to watch that. You can watch me. I have to say, I am loving this monitor stand. Like it's, so freaking flexible for a, for a setting like for a setup like this it's awesome because i've i've I, I, who was it, was it orcast would you say this where it's like there are higher end monitors that don't even have all of that articulation okay let's get to our steam installer and get that going i still haven't run a gpu benchmark and i can do that uh, and i should do that actually let me actually do that before i install steam We'll go back to this. Is that the wrong one? That is the wrong one. Don't need to look at those cables. Don't look at the cables. Okay. So let's, um, Furmark or Heaven? Let's run Furmark. I mean, I've been running Furmark pretty much. So to, to keep it, keep things consistent, might as well run the same thing. God, these ear things are killing me. Yeah, the RAM slots are broken. Uh, okay. Well, that makes sense then. Can you review the, the Predator Orion 3000? Ben, can you have them send me one? Or you can send me one if you want. I generally am not a huge fan of OEM systems, and yeah, to me, that falls under OEM. Um, but I believe they use off-the-shelf, like, you know, the ATX-compatible motherboard, power supply stuff. I'm not sure, though. So it's got that going for it, but I don't think that the uh, airflow is very good on most... Asus and Acer pre-builds. They don't really prioritize that very much. Sorry, I've just been staring at that. Uh, sh no, I don't need that. Just go, go, go! I, I, no, okay. No. Okay, let's run this at, well, 1080. Okay. Okay, looking at GPU temps right here. 72 degrees Celsius. Uh, we, we haven't been running for very long, but uh, there you have it. Let's see. We're running at FPS 195 FPS. Now, this is, this, is, this is very unreasonable. It's very rude of us to do this to the GPU. Um, that's what Furmark is. 
Now, this fuzzy donut right here is pretty hard to render. But yeah, there we go. Intel Arc A770. We're running at uh, 81 degrees Celsius. Pretty warm. But now remember, that's what what's going on in the GPU space is very similar to the CPU space, okay? You're going to see your GPU get up to its temperature where it's limited, and then it'll start adjusting. Just like CPUs. It's not the way it used to be. But we're talking about 84 Celsius. It still hurts to see it. <laughs> GPU throttle reasons, yes. Also keep in mind the ambient temperature in this garage is pretty high. What I'm going to do for the, for our, the final video that's gonna be coming out at the end of this week is I'm going to run this test, these tests also indoors with air conditioning to show the delta between the two, the difference that it makes. Um, but generally what that's probably gonna do is just allow for higher frequencies, higher clocks. They'll still probably run up against their thermal limits and just perform better because the ambient temperature is lower. What's up, Falcon Northwest? How's it going, Kelp? Glad to see you, buddy. Hayden Allen Official. Hey, Braithorn, love your videos. Can you build a Mark V PC from the Skytech Custom Builder and then unbox it and test it? I mean, I've, I've done that before. I have done that before where I get a, a custom PC. Uh, you, I have like four different Skytech reviews. In fact, I'm in the middle of one right now. Um, and this is the, uh, this right here is the Azure 2. Takala, yeah, clock speed should be what you're looking at more than temps with new hardware. In all honesty, this is a better test than testing at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Not everyone has AC. I hope people have AC. Okay, so, yeah, GPU clocks, 2350 megahertz. Max was 2400. So we're still hanging right around the maximum. Memory clocks at 2187. Max was 2187. So at 84 degrees Celsius, this thing is just hanging out. Now, I can't, because of the IEMs, it's hard to tell if there's a, a you know, egregious noise. So I'll have to test it in a quieter environment. I also don't have a decibel meter or anything. Yeah, yeah. No, we're still maintaining the clock speeds from maximum. We're still sticking right around where we need to be. In fact, the GPU fan is not even running at its max RPM. Max RPM was 2875. It's running at 2489 right now. It's like, yeah, I'm good. So, yeah. Uh, after having spoken with some, some folks who are better experienced with a lot, of this, a lot of this testing, who just do it every single day, all the time, like that's what they do. Um, I realized that I was looking at things in the wrong way. In fact, if I were to open this right now, we probably wouldn't see temps dip. We would just see frequencies rise. That's something I got totally wrong on the NZXT one. I was like, oh, look, you take this off, because it, it did go down by like three degrees Celsius, but then it was just like, oh, good, I can perform higher now. I can do more performance things. So yeah. Uh, who's paying for that PC? Well, this is for review. This is a review unit. A actually, it's Intel that helped us do this. So this, that's why this is perfect that this is in the blue case with blue RGB to show off the A770 and the 13600K. So both of them are, at, are running at high temperatures like, Psh, this is whatever. Why are you sweating so much, Bray? We're fine. Okay, okay, I see you. Basically, you can assume your stuff's gonna run cooler than mine because you're gonna be in a very likely in not as hot an area as I am. Okay, thank you, Fermark. Goodbye, Fermark. Now I can complete this right here. Next, go. And I want to update. Is that a dual BIOS card in that thing? I actually don't know. What IEMs you rocking? I think the Shure 215s, not expensive. I think single driver, they're fine. I don't have expensive IEMs because I beat the heck out of them. Uh, is that a dual BIOS switch? 
No, no. No, I feel like it would be somewhere accessible. I actually want to take it out and just look at it. This is my first A770. Again, no one sent me a system with an ARC GPU. I was sad. Okay, y'all aren't going to need to see that. One second. I get the feeling that this whole me not having AC thing is going to be a f it's going to be until like months from now because it was already too expensive for me to do when I first got it was way more expensive than I was expecting when I first got quoted for it. Now I got to quote it again for it and they were like, "Yeah, this is summer. I pay my guys more during the summer." So the the quote went up. I'm like, "I know it's summer. I have to work out here." But you guys are going to see a really cool video on Monday that's not SIW. It's a new series. And we're not getting rid of SI Weekly. Don't worry. Where I'm going, because I work, I, I do all my editing not out here, but on my system that's in our gaming room. That was just really, hey, we just moved in. Let me just set up all my junk here. And there's my computer. Bam. And I do my editing there. Well, yeah, fun stuff's happening there. Well, that's why I sent you one. You can take it out if you want. Yeah. There's really good portable AC units. That's what I have blowing at me right now. But there's only so much they can do in a Texas garage. I got to say, I, I like this monitor. I didn't know if I was going to because I'm a content creator, right? So I'm all about like color accuracy and yada, yada. It looks good. It looks very good. It's not even that bad off axis. Like the viewing angles are supposed to be terrible. It's not bad. And it's just like the same thing that's happening with VA panels. Because if you look at certain really high end monitors, they're VA panels. And the technology for those has advanced quite a bit. I'm guessing the same thing is being done to TN panels. Don't miss those 120 degree days in Texas. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'll have to look. Sure makes quality stuff. They do. That was out of context when I asked who was paying for that PC. It's about the guy that just asked you to spec a new PC and review it. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's the thing is, is I, I'm not at a point where I can just secret shop. I wish I could. Why am I? It's, oh man, getting a little bit of lag in my IEMs now. So, um, Doc Hoddley, you'd be interested in how I have my wireless monitoring set up. Because I can't be tethered when I'm doing this, right? This microphone turned out to be really good. I'm surprised it was like 80 bucks, 80 or 90 bucks. It's a Samson, like head worn microphone, right? And I'd always wanted one because that's what like you see a lot of professionals using. Oh, okay. Sorry, 2FA. There we go.
Okay. All right, I'm just... Adding my drive here. There we go. And all those games are there. Neat. You know, I should honestly try to play something more esports related. Let me actually get. Do I have Afterburner on here? Yes, I do. Of course I do. I need to have a preset. I need to have it, my settings saved from Afterburner to where I can just load it in, load up the preset for settings, and then I've got Reboot Tuner all configured, everything done. I didn't do that, and for that I apologize. Oh yeah, so my setup, I was saying, the stream shows I really need to say bye to my potato and buy a new computer. Intel 4770 just isn't getting it done anymore, nor the old DDR3. Yeah, before I... I want to might might want to pick one up in the meantime so you don't get heat stroke out there. I mean I've got an AC right there so it's it's doing what it can. Um, if you want a secret shop with us, you can place your order. Then after it ships, let me know and I will refund it. I can do that. Sorry, Diablo servers are down. Oh no, man! I actually like. <laughs> Roby got me playing Diablo over at DreamHack. And it sucks because, like, I want to play. I'm like, I did, I don't have much time. Like, before I was playing Tears of the Kingdom, and I had to scratch together as much time as I could to play that because I love Legend of Zelda. It's my favorite franchise, game franchise. Uh, but I want to play Diablo, and I, man, I just don't get enough, that much time to do it. I'll, like, leave my thing, like, logged in and, like, get logged out all the time because I'm like, oh, I got to email. Or, man, I'm falling behind on everything. Ah! And I still miss stuff. So I was going to mention my wireless setup. So this right here is a Rode uh, Wireless ME, and I have a Rodecaster Pro 2. That can just, it has a wireless receiver in it. As they re revealed recently, they had a wireless receiver. You just updated the, the, the software, the firmware, and then bam. You could have these, and it's just a wireless mic into there. But this is actually from an XLR wireless thing, where it plugs into an XLR mic as a wireless transmitter, and then this goes on your camera. But that sucked, and I didn't like it for that. But for this, it has a headphone jack. I plug it into an XLR to, uh, to a 3.5 millimeter, put that in the headphone jack, and it goes wirelessly to this. And I have wireless monitoring and wireless mic. And it sounds good to me. I like it. Hurry up, install, thank you. I'm getting distracted. The Geek Gauntlet Podcast, first live stream here. How is everyone? Well, I'm good. Welcome, welcome to the stream. I'm missing a lot of stuff going on in chat. By the way, uh, yeah, Gary Bell, my, my PC, just before the first video where I talked about uh, buying a pre-built with a 3070 in it, that was a 4790K with an RX 580. What a combo, huh? Don't miss it. Yeah, let me see. We've been doing a lot of work on our QC procedure these last several months. Yeah, and that's, that's, uh, that, I don't know if that was like, I mean, you know, Sometimes it just takes something to happen in order to make changes like that happen, you know? We had a couple of reviews where I was like, hey, you guys and I work on your QC because this was here and this was a problem. Then you guys do it. That's the thing. There's no perfect company, no perfect product. It's how you react to situations like that that makes a difference. Could you do an SI Weekly roundup of advanced battle stations PCs? I've had mine for a year. Nothing but good to say about it. And I had an issue two months ago and Newegg fixed it and next day aired it. Raul, I don't really recommend Newegg. They had so many customer service problems, and yeah, they're on their best behavior now, but that's because they have eyes on them. 
Give it a year. They'll be back to their old hijinks. I'm too nervous about that. He got on a podcast of Roadcaster Pro 2 as well. Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty nice. It's overkill for what I have. And of course, now they have like the Roadcaster Duo and like solo one or whatever. Well, Bray, I'll leave your stream because I got I have to stream. Oh, cool. Okay. Take care. See you in the next stream. You got it. Well, it's right now it's when I get a system to review. But yeah. So rocking an old 650 Ti. That's the thing. Get your money's worth. Don't upgrade till you absolutely have to. I don't need the readme. Thank you. I don't need the read maze. Oh my gosh, why am I taking so long? But yeah, I have Apex Legends on here. Maybe I could just, lo I'm terrible at it. I, I don't have any like rank or anything. I just messed with it that one time I streamed uh, from PAX West. That was the only time I ever played it. And I had uh, Sega behind me, like teaching me. Okay. So that is there. Let me open it up and get the OSD going. Here we go, on-screen display. Okay. Okay, and I think that's everything. Okay. And then I'll open this up and enlarge the display. Okay. Now, uh, I generally start with Cyberpunk. It's just, it's a good overall thing to do because it's one of the hardest games to run. Not at 1080p necessarily, but because actually at 1080p, you, you don't really get much out of stuff like DLSS. Um, but you can check it out. The 6700 XT would have been even better, would be even better for modern games with 12 gigs of VRAM. No, I mean, this has 16, which is like four more gigs of VRAM, which, you know, bigger numbers, more better. Do GTA 5. I don't have that installed. It would take forever to download and install. Uh, if you want to, you could get a 5800X3D, though with a BIOS update. What? Oh, you're talking to somebody else, probably. Um, guillotine. Okay, Mr. Guillotine. I need to reload. I must have knocked over everything trying to get this drink. I don't have a mini split AC in here, but I do have a mini fridge. I'll probably put a lot more than this in here, but it'll do for now. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it now. I got it now. I realized you were talking to somebody else.
Sweet early retirement package. That's awesome. Sorry, just saw that, Gary Bell. Very cool. Great way to spend it. Okay, let me get this. Oh my God, just sink already. Those of you who hang out for the streams, thank you. I know that they're slow and plodding and it takes forever to get things done. Uh, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, there is going to be an edited version of this coming out Friday or let me see at the latest. Yeah, Friday. Friday is going to be the latest that it'll come out. Friday the 30th. So I'm aiming for the 29th, but it's probably going to be Friday the 30th. That's when that'll be coming out. If you want to see an edited version with the montage and everything, because think about it, guys. Fourth of July last year, we had the Azure and one of my absolute favorite montages that I ever did. What if we did a shot for shot identical montage with the Azure 2? Same song and everything. It'd be so cool. Hello, what brand and model number are those square fans in this PC? They're Montec fans for this Montec case. Some of them are reversed. This looks like it would be intake here, exhaust here, but it actually pulls in air through the front from the back. Model number RX-R121600-BFRGB. There you go. Later on, you can slow, play that back slowly if you want. But they come with a case. I don't know if they sell them separately. I imagine they do. Uh... The Montex RX120 RGB, there is a normal and reverse model. There you go, or Chaos already got you taken care of. I admit I'm curious to see how the RGB fares in games. Both NVIDIA and AMD have needed competition for a long time. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Can you help me choose PC parts that can... I'm not doing a PC building help stream right now. I haven't done those in a while because I don't have a streaming setup that allowed... What, I, I couldn't do this three times a week for four or five hours straight. On a side note... If you notice in your BIOS, the setting to enforce the install power limits were enabled and yet 250 watts. Yeah, no, I know, I know. It's gonna be settings beyond easy mode that allow for that, I guess. Now, Hayden, what, what you wanna do is look at my normal system integrator weekly videos because what it comes down to is like, I could recommend parts for you, but I don't have enough information. As in, what your budget is, what else are you going to use it for, if, if not just gaming? Um, you know, do you want a white PC, a black PC, all these different things? Instead, you can watch my videos where I go over different systems for different budgets, things like that. And I've got a ton of those to help you out. Website for the cases, links to the fans. Excellent. Jeff, I can only imagine, my friend. Well, the cloud is just not going to sink. That's just not going to happen. And I don't know why. Thank you, Steam. God, I will say the downside to this cheap head-worn head mic is the comfort level. It's not very comfortable. It's like a really thin wire being pulled down on the top of my, where my ear connects to my head. It's not great. OK, launching. Sorry, guys. I'll bring it over. I got the stuff to log into Cyberpunk, so yeah. Again, I don't run a ton of benchmarks on these streams. That is not what this is about. You're not going to see a ton of charts in the final video. If you want to see benchmarks for the A770, those exist. Benchmarks for the 13600K exist already and way better than I could run them. They have much better tools for that. So that these streams are about what is the experience of getting it, using it, setting it up. 
How does it run? Are the thermals okay? These are the things that most people will care about that are buying a pre-built. Those of you, in the, you know, who are looking for really solid charts on numbers and how, it's, it's not what I think most of my audience is going to want. Okay, Nito. Yeah, it's a Montex Sky 2. This is in the Morocco blue. If you want to get a really good look at this case, Jay's Two Cents has an awesome video where he just does a tour of the case and gives his impressions of it. You might want to check that out. Have you reviewed gaming monitor setups? No. Not really. Um, I do have a video coming out that is going to be starting a whole new series. That's coming out probably on Monday, as, as soon as, you know, I get word back on one thing. Um, it's going to be a whole series, and it does have to do with setups. You can get some like headset cushions, like the top part of a headset. That'd be good if you want a better comfort level. Probably. I mean, this is literally just a wire holding a microphone. Like it's a metal wire thing. I don't know if you can't see it, but it just goes around and then to like the other ear and there's nothing there, just the wire and it just holds the, this little microphone here. Well, heck, this thing says we're running 120 FPS in the splash screen. I do prefer white PCs. You know, me too. I have, other than aesthetically, though, they also film better. They're, they're better on camera. I just realized you guys are probably getting some audio from the top-down camera of all things. Sorry about that. But it, it was very quiet. Oh, no, that's actually from the game. That's the game. Okay. You should have some audio. No, there's no. Well, yeah, a little audio is fine. Specs listed somewhere. 13600K, ARC A7, Intel ARC A770, 32 gigs DDR5, 360 millimeter all in one liquid cooler, 750 watt power supply, one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe drive. Okay, what are our settings here? Uh, graphics are set to ray tracing ultra. Okay. Now, I don't know if it keeps that just because, it, I don't know if it's auto setting that or if that's just because it's how I had, had it set before. But I'm just going to roll with it, man. Let's see what we get. So you've got Intel XE Super Sampling and Intel XE SS 1.1 Sharpness. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's see what we get. Last time I ran this way too many times. We're going to run the hardest benchmark, ultra ray tracing, see what we get, and probably move on. That's a little more like it. Maybe we'll run like a high, medium, low kind of thing. That is generally the hardest part of that benchmark. It seems anyway. Now this is running with full ray tracing on. 
when you're playing a triple a title you generally want to stick around 60 fps this is not a really high fps kind of experience you're looking for it's more of a cinematic kind of experience and hell movies at the cinema run at 24 frames per second usually it's looking good to me Okay, so we'll lock that in right there. Uh, oh, hey, here's your specs. There you go. 13600K, ARC A770, and it is the uh, Acer Predator version of the ARC A770. Ray tracing ultra with texture qualities to high. So let's, uh, let's say okay. So our average FPS was 48, max was 60. Hmm. I wonder if it's maxing it out to, because the capture card is running at 60 FPS. Well, let's see. We'll go back to settings. Let's drop this down. We'll run it on Steam Deck settings. We'll run it on high settings here. There we go. Now, where is the, I guess we'll leave that as it is. Okay, this is set to quality. I'd like to set it to auto, but if that's what it's set to before, we got to keep it the same. Okay, let's run it like this. We took off ray tracing, and we don't have it on ultra. We have it on high. Ray tracing's off. Okay, let's run it. Yes. I'll unsave progress. What game progress did we make? Game's a bit loud? All right. Well, I turned it down. There you go. Oh yeah, that's really sensitive. Okay. I hope that's okay. I hope that's fine. What did I miss in chat? Some kind of tubing to go around the metal wire. I'll just put a put some a pool noodle around it. There you go. Also, white PC parts are harder to find and way more expensive. I would say way more expensive, but yeah, harder to find for sure. From what I've seen of ARC GPUs, they're pretty power efficient. I could have that showing. Look at the difference, though. 103 FPS. 104. Yeah. So that's, that's a significant difference. And this, to me, looks awesome. I should have installed Diablo. That would have been kind of cool. It's not a hard game to run, though, apparently, but... Uh, okay, 98.19. Solid difference. Like, that's probably how I would run it. Okay, cool. So, I like those two. Last time I lingered way too long on Cyberpunk. Let's call that, that good. I think that's good. Looks like 90 plus FPS with ray tracing on high. That's actually... No, oh, ray tracing is not on high. Graphics is on high. Ray tracing was off. Ray tracing was turned off, but it still looked really good. You know, a good place I could look for white PC parts? Shopping for PC parts online. I, I hate to direct people to Newegg. They generally are the best place for searching for stuff, but you can find stuff on Amazon usually. I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. But um, if you have a micro center near you, you can just go there. But odds are you don't because they only have like... 26 locations in the continental U.S. Oh, wrong thing. Hello? All right. Okay. Let's put on Apex Legends. I don't even remember how to play this. I have no idea. I'm just going to run around and die. All right? Sound good? Awesome. This, to me, seems like more of a title for this setup, this GPU this monitor that or like you know cod or something like that what pc is this one uh hayden allen official no i don't think a 12600k would work on an amd motherboard this is a 13600k on a z690 with 32 gigs of ddr5 and the the acer predator intel arc 
A770. Running install script, OK. All right, neato, one sec, BRB. Yes. Oh, good. Anti-cheat. Yep. Oh, man. Y'all about to catch me cheating. Oh, no. Oh, no. But, yeah. Uh, also, Orcaus, you can set the color of parts in... Uh... No, I need to move this keyboard because I keep messing with the wrong keyboard. An Intel discrete GPU has been detected. You may experience better performance by enabling DirectX 12 beta mode. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Instructions can be found here. And you can't copy it. You can't click it. Nothing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Why would you do that? This is so stupid. Oh. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Hold on. Just, and it's locked at 60. That's probably a menu thing, but okay. Uh, not really uh, able to look up parts right now for you. Right now, Hayden Allen official. Okay. What is my, what are my, what are my account stuff? No. No. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. What did I use? Okay, forget it. Forget Apex. Forget it. Nope. I don't, I'm not going and resetting my password or doing any of that crap. What else have I got? How about Power Watch Simulator? Uh, I got CSGO. Sure. I'm from CSGO. I also haven't played that in absolutely forever. Cloud syncing is always a nightmare on these, and I don't know why. Okay, cloud status up to date. Cool. TS go. Let's do this. Yes. I swear, if you make me log into something, you're a Steam game. Do not even think about it. Oh, what is our max GPU temp that we hit? Uh, 85 Celsius. Well, that... Makes sense, I guess. How about max GPU power? Total GPU power, 210 watts. There you go. Gee, it sure would be good, cool if this game would open. That'd be neat. Oh, that's okay, Mr. Gating. Yeah, no, I, I I turned it off. All right, I don't care. 
I don't play this game anymore. I just want to jump into a... Where would I go? Where would I play against bots? Practice with bots. Easy enough. I'm not seeing my I'm not seeing my on on screen display. Why? Why am I not seeing my on, my OSD? I mean, it's running. Maybe it'll come up. I'm just just load, please. Also, when I have all the parts in my cart, it's always double the price of my budget. Then you need to get cheaper parts or work on raising your budget. You know, save up, do whatever you need. No OSD. Okay. What the hell's going on with that? Why is that a thing? Is there a play, place I can turn on frame rates? What did advance do? Nothing here. Raul, that's very true. If you'd rather go with an with an, uh, an NVIDIA GPU, you can do that. This system right here on 4th of July, is gonna, there's going to be 50 of them. It's $16.99, and it's going to come with this monitor right here. The 27-inch 1080p 165Hz Zowie monitor. There's got to be a way to show my OSD. And I did, you know, I have the toggle settings. It's there. I toggled it on. Yeah, it's just not showing it. You know what? Let's just see how it runs. Sure. Oh, there's that. Okay. Dude, this game looks so different from when I used to play it a lot. Can I just kill? Can I just like wipe out the bots so that we can just move on? Uh, Hayden Adam official. That's also something you can do with Skytech. So it doesn't suck, it's just if you want to just get a pre-configured pre-built with Skytech, you can do that. Or you can go to their their Mark 3, 5, 7, and 9 builders and do that instead. But this one is a pre-configured pre-built. It's a special deal that you'll be able to get in 4th of July. So of course it's pre-configured. Uh, you got it, Jeff. Thanks for coming in, buddy. You don't Hayden, you don't have to learn how to build a PC. This is... Well, never mind. You go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go do that. Instead of, you know, make assumptions. That's fine. I should have... Uh... Oh, my God. Okay. Sure. Oh, I'm out of money. Okay.
I'm the MVP. Yay. I haven't played this in so long, guys. 80% of the enemy team. Come on, guys. Get good. It's running smoothly to me. I mean, it looks good to me. Man, I, I used to have all of the, like... Uh, sure. I used to have all, like, the, the by commands, like, by number, just memorized, like, bam, 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 bam. Huh? Can I not aim down the crosshair here? Does right-click just not do that anymore? Yeah, this is this is a perfectly good play experience here. It, it's running awesome. I just wish I had a number for you guys. Uh, what the? No. Damn. Stopped it like just the wrong moment. There we go. Hey George, it's you and me, buddy. You and me, George. We got this. They don't do international shipping. Well, there are uh, SIs in different countries. Uh, do they ship to Canada? I believe you can get it through. Man, I'm. Uh, you can get it. Th they have systems in Canada you can get through like Amazon.ca. So there you go. I believe Skytech is in Amazon.ca. I wish. J you, the, the guy who's like. The, G the CTO of Skytech was here. If you would ask that question just a bit ago, Jeff is the CTO for Skytech. He would have been able to answer that for you better than me. Man, look at those elite skills. Oh, where'd they go? They're gone. There they are. All right. I found Waldo. Ow! Those are my lungs. I need those to breathe. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's kind of silly to play against bots because like, whatever, but I'm in no position to compete with anybody right now. I don't know what like some of the new stuff is. I'm kind of curious. Nah, fine. Uh. Oh my god. Just let me go. Let me go. They changed some of the, the hotkeys for things. And I'm talking about since like 1.6, back when I played this a lot. Counter-Strike 1.6. Oh, hello. Jesus. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah, stop watching, guys. Turn, t Just turn off the stream. Turn off the stream. Go elsewhere. You don't want to see this. What's the difference between CSGO and Call of Duty? They are different video games. I really don't play shooters, honestly. As you can probably tell. What is my tag? Do I not have a tag? Do, do you not tag with T anymore? Oh, I guess you do. I just don't have any thing it, it, it enabled. Ah, God, this angle is terrible. It's like hurting my hand. Mm. And there's no sprint anymore? Am I crazy? I guess not. Maybe I'm thinking about... I don't know. I used to play Valorant for a little bit. That was fun. Fun fact, my very first stream ever was Valorant. And I was terrible. And I still am. And I, I, I mean, I, w I wouldn't know. I actually don't play it anymore. I don't think I ever even got ranked. I was just having fun with it. I was just, like, stoked that I had the beta. Ah, ah, ah. 
Wall, wall. Who put that wall there? Very rude. Where are you going? Follow me. I have the thing. I have the thing that we're supposed to do. All right. Maybe on Play-Doh settings? Is this on Play-Doh settings? This is an easy game to run, though. Building it is easy and fun. There are plenty of YouTube vids if you need help with hooking up fans and whatnot. I mean, easy is going to be subjective. Some people take to that kind of stuff naturally. Some people really don't. Uh, for, my, for, for my part, I recommend Pre-Builds as a great gateway to DIY if that's something you ever want to do. You learn how to upgrade and mod and eventually build. Yeah, I did it. They all died. I spared myself. I'm the important one. I'm the only actual human here, okay? Sprint having your knife out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Homeland Citizen CCCP. Triple CP? Is that how you would say it? Yeah, that's right. Man. I don't even know why I bought CSGO, because I never played it. Like, Counter-Strike Source, I played a little bit of. Really? There ain't nobody here. This is really not ideal, like, my hand position, because I'm on a, like standing up like this. I need to raise my desk more if I want to do it properly. It is not cozy. Uh, we're about to win anyway. Whatever, I get extra money. Anyway, as you guys can see, this is... I don't know how it's showing up on stream, but to me, here, it's running super smooth. The stream is going to be limited to 30 frames per second. What can you do? Uh, but from what I can see here, it's running awesome. So uh, I'm going to call that good. I wish to stop playing now. Yes, thank you. That... No, I mean, like, quit. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so man, <laughs> every time I like, I don't know how much I'm sweating till I see myself on my monitor, and I'm like, oh my god. Okay, so we got to see how this thing ran with a high-end AAA title, like a hard-to-run AAA title, which is why I like to run Cyberpunk as a benchmark. And we got to see it run a game that can run on the toaster, CSGO. It handled both really well in their, you know, re respective to how you expect those kinds of games to go. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get, you know, my on-screen display for a frame rate for CSGO, but I got to tell, I, and you're probably limited in how much you can see for it. It looked like it was running at about like 120 or one or higher, just like to the point where it's like, oh, this is like 60 FPS. You can't tell, basically. Raythorn should have his own PC shop where he can buy pre-builds and custom builds. He could also help with repairs or PC part help. That sounds like way too much work. Besides, once I'm selling my own stuff, you can't trust me anymore. You can't trust me to rate something else and say whether it's good or not. Because I'm just going to say that, oh, well, my stuff is the best, obviously. Clearly. Uh, I've been, I've been asked, why don't you start your own system integrator company? And I'm like, especially not now that I have some understanding as to how hard that is. Uh, but no, consumers need help with pre-builds. Most people buy pre-built, literally like 70 to 75% of consumers year to year buy pre-built PCs versus DIY components. So there needs to be more content for pre-built consumers. Like, that's what I'm here for. That's why I have nearly 90 episodes talking about how to figure out what pre-built's right for you, looking at different companies, seeing what's good about them, and telling you. SI Weekly is now, it's, we're getting close to 100 episodes. We're getting up to 90 here in a bit, and we're gonna have a 100th episode here in a, in a few months. It's crazy, but it's necessary. Like, we need this. So that's what I'm gonna keep doing. 
if I wanted to make a lot of money, I could do something where the trust that I've built with you guys can benefit me monetarily. And I say, hey, you should buy these things that I'm selling. I won't do that. I can't do that. Uh, it's a conflict of interest, unfortunately. So that's not the route I'm going to go. Instead, I'm going to keep looking at these companies and seeing where there can be improvement. A lot of them have been very receptive. In fact, I got a Twitter DM earlier today from someone who I hadn't spoken with before. They have a small system integrator company, and they said that they've been watching SI Weekly, and it's helped them change and form the company and make decisions around the company based on some of the things that I've pointed out as, hey, this is a bad business practice. Hey, this is a good one. And that was really rewarding for me to read that. That was really cool. Shock and awe says, I, watched, I brought a pre-built last year, watched a bunch of your vids. That's awesome. That was really cool. Glad to hear it. Do you trust Amazon with pre-builds and PC parts or is Best Buy better? PC parts are PC parts. Like, I would probably do, if you have a Best Buy locally, you can see what parts, sometimes they're, un, you, you, some people underestimate how good they can be for components. Sometimes they have sales that are like, nobody else has prices this low or whatever. Um, Amazon though, I mean, you have your return options, but be careful. Sometimes they'll have spe specific return options for specific hardware where you can't return it if it's opened, whatever. Uh, just be careful about that. I miss Tiger Direct. <laughs> I miss Manueg was good. It's uh, it, there uh, one good place to buy PC parts that nobody talks about. B and H Photo. B and H Photo has PC parts. I I've bought things like CPU motherboard combos and bundle deals, things like that. You can risk Newegg. They have the biggest selection, and their search engine is way better than Amazon's. But you have to understand that by the time you might need to do an RMA, they might be back to their old nonsense, and you might be out a motherboard or something. I can't recommend them based on that. It's like... They're like, oh, we're sorry. No, they're sorry they got caught doing what they were doing. That's it. I'm, you know, I need, unless they can convince me otherwise, legitimately convince me otherwise, and it would take a lot. I just don't really trust Newegg. You didn't mention Newegg. You mentioned Amazon and Best Buy. Amazon can be hit or miss. The free shipping is nice. The two-day shipping is nice. But finding stuff on there can be really hard because their search engine sucks. The best thing to do is go to PCPartPicker.com. You go by part by part, and there are all these different things that'll help you make your search easier. All these different qualifiers, basically. These different drop-down menus, variables, uh, you know, CPU, motherboard, all that stuff. You pick each one, and it'll show you where the best prices are, and then you just go to that link, and then you buy it if you're trying to build it yourself. If you want a pre-built, Watch SI Weekly. Go back a few episodes. Keep, like, just, I've covered so many SIs. The world is your oyster when it comes to options. Now, what we're talking about right now, though, is this guy right here. Uh, my take on this, I really like it. I, I understand that the way ASRock has their BIOS, that it's going to pump a lot of power into that 13600K whenever you're taxing it to the limit, when you're really putting it through its paces. However, it never like shut down. It hit its, you know, TJ Maxx and its thermal limits, right? But it's designed to run at those thermal limits for an undisclosed amount of time. That's just how it's designed. I might fiddle with it a little bit, see if I can get that down, you know, get those, get that limit to come down a bit. Who knows? Uh, as for the GPU, it did everything I asked it to with no problems. I am stoked, stoked that the A770 is this good. And I honestly would like to try it at higher resolutions. Um, 
but honestly, with your getting this package deal, you're gonna get a high frame rate, a high, a high refresh rate, 1080p monitor. So gaming at 1080p with this thing, no hiccups, no problems. Everything went great. Uh, running both a, you know, a full-on AAA title and running something like an esports title. It did both. Plus, you're gonna have AV1 encoding with this and 32 gigs of DDR5. If you wanna stream to YouTube, this thing can do it. 100% because you can use AV1 encoding to stream to YouTube. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. So what I'll do is I'll run some thermal tests indoors, not in the garage setting out here, to see if there's any difference in the temperatures. But honestly, I don't think there's going to be. I think it's going to hit 100 degrees Celsius, and maybe the frequencies will be different. That's what I'm predicting. And that's, that's OK. It's designed to work like this. And there has been an Intel, tech, Intel engineer in a video saying, if your CPU is not running at 100 degrees Celsius, you're leaving performance on the table. Well, they're putting their money where their mouth is on that. But I got to tell you, the combination between the Intel CPU and GPU here worked awesome. Like, opinions aside, it just worked really well. I had no complaints. All good. Uh, yeah, Hayden, they don't do that. Yeah, they, Best Buy doesn't do that. Yes, B and H photos, B and the ampersand, like the end symbol, H, photos. They have PC parts, yes. Just, if you go to PC Part Picker and you're looking at a specific part, it will have B and H sometimes as one of the options. That's how you know. Yep, same here, four hours away. Though my closest one to me is four hours away in Houston. It is a really cool story. If you ever go to a place where they have it, you should definitely check it out. But if you don't live near one, it's not your option. It doesn't, doesn't work for you. Uh, there's a lot of stuff they do not ship. But yeah, okay. We're going to go ahead and call this good. Oh, the monitor. The monitor. Now, I understand that when someone's reviewing a monitor and showing it off on stream or whatever, or saying, hey, this looks really good, you can't see how good it looks. But I have used TN panels in the, in the past, and this one is the best looking TN panel I've ever seen. It looks really good, and the colors are not bad. I don't have the advanced tools to actually measure that, but I look at a color accurate screen every single day, and, it's, and the, the thing is, this is from BenQ. Zowie is a sub-brand for, for BenQ. And BenQ is well known to make content creation monitors in, like industry-wide. It's one of the industry standards. Um, the frame rates were awesome. It is an actual full-on 165 hertz refresh rate, not overclocked or overdriven or whatever. It's just 165. And this monitor stand is absolutely one of the best I've seen. Seriously, it is dope. Like I was able to actually, it helped me because I could like do stuff like this whenever I'm showing it, like right now. So check out this deal, 4th of July. It's going to drop on the 4th of July. You hit, there are 50 units where you'll be able to get the Azure 2 with this spec for $16.99 and get the free 27-inch 1080p, 165 hertz, Zowie monitor along with it, and keyboard and mouse. Basically, you're good to go other than like a headset. That's everything you need, headset or speakers, and then you're done. Because this thing doesn't have speakers in it. Get yourself some like Creative Pebbles or something for like, I don't know, what are they, like 15 bucks? Done, or a headset, done. So thank you very much to SkyTech for sending this thing out for me to check out and for working with me on it so that we could spec this thing out and make it great. I love the case. Can't wait to throw it in the montage for you guys. And also for sending out the monitor so I could check it out too. It was part of the bundle, so reviewing it did need to be part of this. And thank you to Intel for helping make all this happen. Thank you so much, guys. That's going to be it for this one. So until next time, take care. That's for the video, guys. That's it for the video. That's just for the video. Uh, I mean, I can. I am done, and I am tired, but that was just the closing thing for the video. Wonder how much this is gonna be. As I said, it is $16.99 with the PC and the gaming monitor.
I built a PC for a friend recently, picked out all the parts from Amazon. Yeah, if you know what you're doing, it's not hard. How probably PC build I need if I was gonna play stream Diablo 2 Resurrected? Do you know how random it is to ask what kind of PC you need for a game that is years old? I mean, maybe Diablo 4 that just came out, yeah. Crash thinks it's a beautiful looking PC. I agree with Crash. Um, yeah, I don't know. Basically, get yourself something with a decent number of cores, okay? A GPU that has good encoding and at least 32 gigs of RAM, and you can do all of that. All right, guys. Well, I think I am gonna call it here. I am very tired. And even though I drank a ton of water, a little dehydrated, I'm gonna shut this thing down and rest and I'll get some B-roll of it tomorrow so we can get this video out. But yeah, for reals though, thank you so much guys. Not $16, Hayden, obviously, come on. $1,699.99. You use that one against me. Forgotten Freshness, thank you very much, everybody. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. We had like we had over 50 concurrent viewers for this one. I appreciate you. I see you. You're amazing. Man, I want to I, I should stream more. Don't even, don't even. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Take care of yourselves. And uh, watch out Monday for a really cool video that's going to be the start of a new series. You're not even ready. So get ready. All right, guys. Take care. Let's go, nerds!